The celebration is on for the Clemson Tigers. Now they wait to find out who they meet. The winner of game number two, our second semifinal, the Michigan State Spartans and the Alabama Crimson Tide. So we know who's in, but who is up next? The players are ready and waiting to take the field. Everything's on the line in this game. You know, we got an opportunity to play for the national championship, take this program somewhere it hasn't been since the 60s. We're relentless with our running game, passing game, our defense. We're just going to keep coming at them, and they better be ready. Obviously, our season's on the line. You know, this is a semifinal, so if we lose, we're done. Well, if you've ever been in a fist fight, it's, you know, just think of it as that. That's what it's going to be like. Messy, just grimy and just dirty and just filthy and just exactly the way we like it. It's all about whoever gets it done. It's all about getting the job done now. Whoever wins gets bragging rights, so that's what it's all about. Welcome to the TurboTax College Football Pregame Show. And welcome everyone to AT&T Stadium. It's the Goodyear Cotton Bowl. John Saunders alongside of Mac Brown and Mark May. We should be in for a great second semifinal. As I said earlier, that's like the finesse guys who battled it out on the toe. But now it's time to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the heavyweights. Michigan State, what is the key to their squad? Michigan State on offense has to stay balanced and they've got to win third down, especially with Connor Cook. On defense, stop the run, put Alabama in second long and third long, and then they've got to win third down again because they've got to win some deep balls in situations with their defensive backs and the Alabama receivers. Can Michigan State move the ball against this vaulted Alabama defense. It's the best rush defense in the land. They're only giving up 74 yards per game. And the other key, can the Michigan State defense stop Derrick Henry? No one really has the entire season. That's why he won the Heisman Trophy. Last year, we crowned the national champion in this building. This year, we will find out who will play for the national championship and join the Clemson Tigers. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl is coming up. The Intuit TurboTax College Football Pregame is brought to you by Intuit TurboTax. Taxes done smarter. Everyone, welcome back to Texas as we prepare for game number two of our college football playoff. Now to honor America, here's jazz trumpeteer Freddie Jones with the playing of our national anthem. Eagles fly, but will Spartans or Crimson Tide prevail? The Nissan pregame rush from Arlington is coming up next. But first, a look inside Nissan's Heisman House.
It is almost time. The building is revving, lurching, wild and limitless. Nothing matters now but ending the wait. It's New Year's Eve. It's party time. It's game time. inside AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. In the heart of Texas tonight, the second ticket to the title game, up for grabs. It's the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, the second semifinal between the Big Ten champion Michigan State Spartans and the Southeastern Conference champion Alabama Crimson Tide. They will battle for the right to face the unbeaten top-ranked Clemson Tigers in the championship game brought to you by AT&T a week from Monday in Glendale, Arizona. And welcome, Chris Fowler, Kirk Kerbstreet, Heather Cox, Tom Rinaldi will join us, and thank you for spending the final few hours of 2015 <laughs> down here in Texas. Kirk, experts were wrong in the semifinal number yeah. one. The Spartans are big underdogs tonight against the Crimson Tide. They've thrived in that role, but two teams who stumbled this season and then responded spectacularly. That's why they're here. It is why they're here. And, and I think with all the emotion in this building, with the layoff and the buildup and the hype, when you're the underdog, you need to start well. Michigan State needs to come out of this game with Mark D'Antonio, and they need to establish some confidence, whether it's on defense against Derrick Henry or the offense with Connor Cook making a play through the air. They need something good to happen early to get themselves to believe that an upset can happen for them as well. Familiar turf, this is where they came from 20 points down to beat Baylor in last year's Cotton Bowl. This is the place where Alabama began their campaign this season. It's a veteran team. There are 20 fifth-year seniors, a very accomplished group, but this is the one thing this group hasn't yet done, play for and perhaps win a national championship. Imagine what's going through these players' minds. Big opportunity. This is what you dream about when you start to play football as a Pee Wee football player and you select your college and you hope one day to win a championship and be able to get to a national championship. And Michigan State now has that opportunity. And the wait is over. They have a flair for the dramatic. They beat Ohio State and Michigan, leading for zero seconds in either game. And of course, the long march, a 22 play touchdown drive to beat Iowa for the Big Ten championship. New coaches thrive in the underdog role better than D'Antonio and the Spartans. One thing we know about Michigan State tonight, they will play with a lot of emotion. who injured his shoulder, missed the victory at Ohio State, and nursed it through the final two games, told us the other day, Kirk, the shoulder is 100%. Do you buy it? I do. Now, he hasn't been hit since the last game that they played against Iowa in the Big Ten Championship, and he's going to get hit tonight against this Alabama defense. How will he respond? But make no mistake, as much as we talk about the physicality and the line of scrimmage in this game between these two teams, the quarterback play for both teams, and especially Michigan State, it's imperative that Connor Cook, who this will be his 39th career start, that he plays one of his best games of his career. Most experienced quarterback in the playoff against the least experienced, Nick Saban, hoping that Jake Coker, the senior who's waited his whole life for a chance at a championship, can come through tonight. But the personality of his team is shaped by the defense, and specifically that defensive front. 
Todd, typically business-like in the build-up. We've been amazed, Griff. We've seen plenty of Alabama practices, but they have practiced with a ferocity right up until this high-stakes game. This is a team that won a championship in the last two years. They have admitted the focus just hasn't quite been there. You and I have been around this week down here in Arlington. If they lose this game, it will not be because they don't respect it and they're not focused on Michigan State. And Derrick Henry wins the Heisman Trophy. Chris, you and I made the same comment that I don't know if I've ever seen a Heisman Trophy winner handle that the accolades and the hype as well as he has. It's business as usual. He's out here practicing, working as hard as he ever has. Michigan State has got to put everybody at the line of scrimmage to stop him, especially early in this game, which will give Jake Coker, Calvin Ridley and company opportunities to make big plays in a pass game for the Tide early in the game. Yeah, huge workload down the stretch for Henry. 90 carries combined the last two games, but he has had a few weeks to get ready. He feels fresh. He looks fast on this rug, and he says he's recharged. But he can't carry the load alone, even though it looks like he does sometimes. Can Coker and the receivers make the plays they need to? Well, if you wait till third down, this is going to be something we'll watch tonight. Third and six or longer, Alabama's 111th in the country, one of the worst in the country. They've got to take their shots on early downs to try to find the matchups to their liking. And Lane Kiffin who calls the place for the tide, eager to see how Jake Coker responds to the moment. To the field, Mike DeFee in the coin toss. Okay, gentlemen. Congratulations and welcome to the 80th Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. This is our coin for the toss today. This is the Alabama logo, and this is the Michigan State logo. The winner of the toss will be the logo left up. I want to introduce to you Mr. Dan Novakal, chairman of the Cotton Bowl Classic. He will do the tossing of the coin. Mr. Novakal, will you do the honors, please? Thank yeah. you, Mike. Yeah. Good luck, okay. gentlemen. Won the toss. Defer. You want to defer the option. You want the ball. Which end do you want to kick from? I want to kick that way. Kick this way. Spin this direction. Michigan State. They Alabama rehearsed this four times the yesterday. Toss. The Tide won the toss every time, and they win it for real. To Heather Cox with Mark D'Antonio. Chris, thanks so much. Coach, your quarterback, Connor Cook, by his own assessment, said he hasn't played in a game at 100% since injuring his throwing shoulder six weeks ago. Yeah, what do you go. need from him tonight? What do you he's need good. from him? Got to play. Got to play. He's ready to go. We got to go, man. Coach, what's the single most important thing you can Don't do? Don't oh, All right, Coach, thanks. Now let's head to Tom Rinaldi with Nick Saban. Coach, after all the practice and the preparation, what's the single greatest unknown in your mind in this game? Well, I think they're 26 days off and how you're going to come out and play. So you know, I think our guys have prepared well. They practice well. And uh, I think we're ready to play well. It's just going to be a matter of the discipline that we have and how we execute and how we can play for 60 minutes in the game. Appreciate it. Good luck. Yeah. All right, thank you. Chris. 15 years ago, Nick Saban was the boss of Michigan State. Mark D'Antonio worked for him. But I think he's more than tired of being called a Saban disciple. Well, how about that? I mean, he's ready to, he's yes, ready to he go. He said, don't flinch. To Heather about the key to this football game for his team. That's the message. Now, this has been the Nissan pregame rush, and a lot of feel the rush in here. This is about, uh, I would say, an Alabama crowd of 55 45, but pretty close to 50 50. It sure is. Great scene, great atmosphere, great build up, and let's just have a great game now. Let's take a look at each team's plan for success presented by Northwestern Mutual. Uh, we, we have talked uh, throughout the day about Connor Cook. Big night throwing the football to set up the run. The defensive backs, they've got to hold up in one-on-one -on -one coverage, especially when Alabama takes shots downfield in man-to-man -man coverage. For Alabama, it's attack through the air on early downs and also on defense. Disrupt the timing between Connor Cook and his receivers. Iowa did a very good job of that. It's not just about Connor Cook. It's about the Spartans wide receivers. Can they get away from press coverage from Alabama? So the Tides, junior Adam Griffith to boot it away. Aaron Burbridge and Delton Williams deep with the Spartans. Semifinal number two. 
and a ticket to the title game at stake right now. Like most of Griffith's kickoffs, this one is deep and not to be returned. Fifth-year senior Connor Cook comes from Northern Ohio. His health has been so much an issue. His leadership has been questioned. He's been very defiant about that. But look at the big game resume. He's won three bowl games the last three years. Yeah, people could say whatever they want about why he wasn't elected captain as a fifth-year senior, three-year starter. All I know is this guy wins football games. 34 and four in his career making his 39th start tonight. He's got to be on top of his game to give the Spartans a chance to be consistent moving the ball. Behind a fine offensive line, they'll rotate the backs. Gerald Holmes, the sophomore from Flint, gets the start. And a first down throw. Cook fires far side into strong coverage, and right away, a pass interference flag. Marlon Humphrey was in coverage against the top Spartans receiver, Burbridge. Well, Humphrey, we talked about these receivers getting separation. Humphrey's locked on to him, but he didn't get his head turned around to locate the football. And he's because of defense, number 26, spot foul, automatic, first down. And because of the contact, watch, again, they're going to press him all night. Look at the contact and the fact the defensive back's head is not turned around to locate the football. A great call here on this first play of the game by the officials. Burbridge, a guy with 80 catches this year. He's emerged as the go-to guy after playing a secondary role his first three years. This is Holmes. Very tough to find room in the middle of that Alabama defensive line, Kirk, as we check the Chick-fil-A impact players. Yeah, Michigan State's confident that they will be able to run. They need balance tonight. But when you look at individual players, Aaron Burbridge on the outside leads a very talented group of wide receivers. L LJ Scott, you'll see Holmes, you'll see London. They've got to be able to run the ball so it's not a very predictable play calling situation. Reggie Ragland, the leader number 19, the middle linebacker, and Cyrus Jones along with Humphrey got to be able to hold up and play great coverage on the outside. Holmes collides with Cook and is able to muscle forward, but the timing on the play disrupted, and it'll be third down. Jaron Reed, Denzel Duvall combining. Yeah, the, the timing's disrupted because, as you said, a quarterback and running back run into each other. Look at the left guard in the background. He also is affected by the penetration by Alabama. The play did not have a chance, but Connor Cook running into Holmes definitely did not help the cause. A little bit of jitters here maybe early as far as Holmes and Cook are concerned there on that play, but it does set up our first third down of the ball game. In this department, the Spartans have been a lot better than the Crimson Tide this season, converting more than half their third downs among the top in college football. Empty backfield. Cook fakes and then takes off. Not known as a runner and wrapped up by Reggie Raglan, the middle linebacker, one of the leaders of that defense. Yeah, they also brought in Ronnie Harrison, a defensive back. So they had six defensive backs in the game. Watch Harrison right here. You see him stay home, gets off his blocks, and it allows Reggie Raglan to be able to clean it up. But 15 involved here. The six defensive backs, Allen 93 involved as well. Interesting that Michigan State, after all their scouting report, Quarterback run against Alabama has given them problems, but Connor Cook, not the most fleet-footed in that time, did not have a chance. Jake Hartbarger is the redshirt freshman punter. Cyrus Jones deep for the tide, and he makes a fair catch, and the tie will take over inside their 20. Players, cheerleaders, early seat claimers, the road trippers, masked riders, passionate tailgaters, the whiteouts, blackouts, fans going all out, the hootin' and hollering, foot stomping, halftime bands rocking. Every team has a tradition that inspires superior performance, and for the last 60 years, we're proud to be the one they all have in common. 
And just a few steps from where Derrick Henry collected the Heisman Trophy. Of course, Times Square, about three and a half hours till the ball drops. And Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest going over on ABC. We'll keep you posted when the musical acts will take the stage. If you want to bounce over. Meanwhile, Henry and the tied offense, their opening possession. So the penalty on the opening play of the game doesn't cost Alabama. They quickly force up on afterwards. And it'll be very interesting to see, Kirk, how Lane Kiffin calls this game. Because Michigan State, as you said, is so intent on stopping number two, as most defenses are, but haven't been able to do very well. They pop the ball to Calvin Ridley, the talented freshman, and he finds a few yards around the end. Jake Cooker grew up in Mobile, a Crimson Tide fan. Didn't get a lot of big offers, he told me. Went to Florida State, backed up Jameis Winston, who just sent him a text congratulating him on the SEC championship. Transferred here, lost the job to Blake Sims a year ago. And boy, it was a troubled start to the season, wasn't it, for Coker? Benched against Ole Miss, but came off the bench. They lost the game, but he won the team that night. He sure did. They were down 17-3 when he was inserted, and he played with a different attitude, a different edge to him. And they, they really found their identity after that game. It's a second down throw, catch made by Ridley, who darts across the 34 of first down as we continue with the Chick-fil-A impact players. The first couple plays, they're trying to get the ball out to the perimeter, away from the teeth of that Michigan State defense. Derrick Henry, we know that they want to be able to throw the football. Calvin Ridley has got an ability to get downfield. You have Riley Bull in the middle and Calhoun on third down. Poker's pass batted down at the line by Lawrence Thomas, the fifth-year senior defensive end. And the D-line also is strength of this team. Absolutely. It's, it, it really is, Chris. I think Mark D'Antonio would tell you the difference between some of the great Michigan State teams that he's had over the last four, five, six years and where they've been the last year or two is up front. Guys like Lawrence Thomas, Malik McDowell. Uh, we know about Shalik Calhoun, Joel Heath. They're deep as well. They'll rotate up to eight guys up front. On the end around, our Darius Stewart tries to get to the edge, hit hard and driven down. Monte Nicholson, the free safety, delivering a big hit, but that's a nice game. Lane Kiffin right now going away from Derrick Henry, and he's going with a jet sweep, something he picked up from Tom Herman, the head coach at Houston. A nice block by O.J. Howard. Stewart involved a nice uh, job of being able to accelerate and get downfield, but Ridley also a great block to spring him loose. Sets up third and three. This is an area where the Tide have really struggled, especially early in games on third down. Again, they fake it to Henry. Coker backpedaling, flips it to Stewart. Trying to make a man miss, can't. Brought down for a loss, well short of the marker by a swarming Spartans defense, and Bama will have to punt. Well, third down, as you said, has been a problem for them all year, and we, we put a lot of that on Jake Coker, Chris, but it also was on the offensive line. And that time, Shalik Calhoun put a lot of pressure on him and got him to get rid of the ball before he was ready. It's something that Lane Kiffin's going to try to avoid all night long because, again, they're 111th in the country when they get to that third down and six and a little bit longer. So Kirk, five plays in the opening possession. No touches yet for the Heisman Trophy winner. J.K. Scott. Has come on after a rough start to the season. Look how high this talented sophomore from Colorado can boom the ball, and it bounces down inside the five-yard line. Spartans didn't field it, and it cost them, and they'll be pinned back inside the five for their second possession as Cook goes back to work. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, brought to you by Goodyear. Follow at Goodyear on Twitter for big daily prizes. Hashtag Goodyear. AT&T, mobilizing your world. The Capital One Quicksilver card. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back. Every purchase, every day. Chevrolet, find new roads. And Gatorade, fueling today, fueling the future. Nice night to fly in Texas and our aero coverage provided by Goodyear. Kick off your drive with tires that return superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. And because McGarrett King, who was lined up really deep, Kings didn't come up and field it, Kirk. It bounced all the way down inside the five, a 56-yard punt by Scott. Uh, a mistake there by Kings cost them 15 yards, and now they're pinned back deep in their own territory. That's where you got to be careful with the emotion still early in this game. 
L.J. Scott, a talented true freshman, the workhorse in that marathon drive against Iowa in the game. Off the blitz, they flip it to Josiah Price, and the tight end has running room and a first down across the 15. To Heather. Chris, you can see that Connor Cook is wearing a brace on that sprained right throwing shoulder. He said it's a precaution. It makes his shoulder feel tighter when he's wearing it. As you mentioned, he threw max velocity for the first time in practice on Monday. Said it's the hardest he's thrown in six weeks. He's been doing daily ice and stem for rehab. Mark D'Antonio did say earlier his quarterback must play with great toughness and stay locked in the pocket for his team to have success, Chris. And Heather, he hopes, get the ball out quickly. And Which he just did. Take a, a minimum combo. number of hits. Yeah. Play action to Scott Cook. Has to dump it short. Which, again, it's Price in traffic, weaving. And a short gain as the second catch for the junior tight end. And, and we've talked about how will he respond to getting hit. And what will happen once he gets sacked or he gets pressure. And off this play action, he does it. He gets hit here by Ryan Anderson coming off to his right. Gets off of the protect. But he did a good job of dumping it. But you know what? You talk to any quarterback, even when dealing with an injury like that, he can settle into the game now. Now, now the, the butterflies and the concerns about the shoulder and getting hit just settles him in. And now it's just about executing. On second and seven, they feed Scott and tries to bounce it, but is going to be dropped for a loss. Ryan Anderson again involved in the tackle. It'll be third and long. Boy, wa watch the pit here. A. Sean Robinson, number 86, who is going to be a handful tonight. He's right here. Watch him be able to deal with one lineman, another one. He's the one who actually jams that hole. Anderson, 22, is involved, and there's the pursuit of the Alabama defense. But A. Sean Robinson in the middle, along with Jaron Reed, number 90, that's who Michigan State's going to have to contend with, and that's why I think they're trying to go more to the perimeter because it's tough sledding right now in between the tackles. Cook is brilliant against the blitz, but the Tide don't often have to blitz, and they rush only three, and they flush him immediately. Cook around the corner, throws, incomplete. On the sideline, Kings was trying to haul it in. He says he made the catch. Well, he did make the catch, but he didn't get a foot down. Officials were right on top of that. They flushed him. They got Actually, Michigan State got him away from the pressure. He tries to get a foot down. Boy, he, that's why he was arguing it. He's trying to say that his left toe was down before his heel ended up getting down. In that situation, his toe has to stay up. When the heel comes down, he's out of bounds. It's incompletion. Antonio checking the giant jumbotron overhead. With the call will stand. And Cyrus Jones back to receive the punt from Hartbarger which is a high one and drives Jones back to the 30 no fair catch hit immediately excellent coverage there by Tyson Smith so Derrick Henry when will he touch the ball for the first time the tied second possession coming up oh pardon the pun but it's been a really good year for Derrick Henry of course the second Heisman winner from Alabama trying to do what Mark Ingram did in 09 followed it up with a national championship cleaned up the other major awards broke Herschel Walker's single season SEC rushing mark 23 rushing touchdowns and Kirk needs 14 yards to hit 2000 this season Lane Kiffin has chose to use him as a decoy emphasize other guys so far and I think Lane Kiffin knew because of the respect he has for the style of defense Michigan State plays early he wanted to give him another look going outside when they get in this pistol formation usually they hand it off to number two instead they fire far side to Ridley who's been active early already a few catches well Tom Rinaldi can add on Lane Kiffin's game plan Chris spoke with Lane Kiffin before the game and he said he had scripted the first 22 plays for the offense but he wanted to gauge how Jake Coker would react to the size of the stage and the magnitude of the moment he said only after gauging that would he know how he would call this game interesting to see that he's yet to hand the ball to number two wants to see how he passes the ball Chris and on cue he does handle the number two and Henry stutter steps and does move the chains across the 40 yard line. Coker starting four for five, Kirk, but they've been short passes. And this is the matchup that really you want to see. And being able to control the line of scrimmage is a tough thing to do against the Michigan State defense. But what Tom is saying about Lane's approach makes a lot of sense. You know how Derrick Henry will handle this stage, but how will Jake Coker? He's kind of feeling him out here early. Henry 
That's what the Spartans want to do, isn't it? Get him moving sideways and not get that big body moving downhill. It's exactly what you have to do. When he squares his shoulders and runs downhill, as we've seen all year, he's a handful. And look at the, the discrepancy between Henry and the linebacker in the middle, Riley Bullitt, 6'2", 230. Now, he's tenacious, so it's size but against quickness and an aggressive attitude from the middle linebacker. Remember, his, of course, his older brother, Max, his dad, Shane. Grandfather, I mean, you talk about being a Spartan. Number 30 is a Spartan. Top tackler on this defense who tweeted congratulations to Henry. Says looking forward to facing a Heisman winner here in Arlington. Henry took no insult in that, by the way. Coker chased, flushed, and loses the ball. It rolls out of bounds. Arjun Colhoun, the quarterback, was running him down and knocked the ball out of his hands, lucky to avoid a turnover. Yeah, and, and he never even saw him. The blitz comes from right here to his right. And I don't know if that's one of the, he turns his back, it's play action. That might be on Derrick Henry, who needs, needs to abort and come off the play action. But nonetheless, nobody picks him up. The ball's on the ground. Fumble. Colhoun kicked the ball out of bounds or had a chance to recover it. There's also a flag on the play. Holding offense number 50. That penalty's declined. Third down. And the right guard that time, Taylor, and the inside of this pass rush from Michigan State will give Nick Saban, Lane Kiffin, and this offensive line fits. They are athletic. They are lean and long. McDowell for Joel Heath is both those guys are six six in the middle. Keep an eye. We talk about Cal Calhoun all the time on the outside and Thomas, but it's the inside tonight of 92 and four that could give Alabama the most trouble. So Henry out of the game on third and 19 and Kenyon Drake, the versatile running back to the left of Coker. Spartan fans up and making noise. Coker chased again, dumps it off, dropped by Drake, who's healthy finally has two screws in the smaller bone on his right arm finally says he's good to go but drops his first chance yeah they, they want to try to find him in earlier downs when they can find him in a mismatch maybe in man-to-man -man coverage but third down and long he's got ability but again there's that defensive line they, they didn't even have to blitz necessarily to get pressure that time mcdowell was able to get off of the block and even though they're trying to set up a screen it's just the timing was off because of the pressure and the pressure applied by colhoun the canadian Attention John Saunders on that play was the key in the drive. Scott gets a much lower punt away. Again, Kings doesn't field it, but this time it doesn't take a real big roll. Michigan State will take over at the 32. You're watching the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. A reminder, we've taken two things that you love, made it one thing. Watch ESPN is now the ESPN app. It's on ESPN. It's going to be on the app. You can download it to start live streaming now. So far, Bama's defense has been typically suffocating in the early going. They've only allowed 19 first quarter points all season. That's one touchdown by Tennessee and four other field goals. You can see Alabama right now playing with safeties that are back. It makes it very tough to be able to get the deep ball. You have to work on your running game and your short passing game when you have two safeties. It's Madre at London's turn to carry the ball. They'll rotate backs and hope that one of them gets hot. But the freshman from Fort Lauderdale gets nothing there. Well, it's hard to run the football no matter who that back is. You could have Le'Veon Bell back there against that defensive front and the way they're controlling that line of scrimmage. It's, it's not going to matter. They're going to have to do something to, as I said, I think Connor Cook and the passing game, the short intermediate passing game, occasionally taking some shots, that's what's going to have to come into play for Michigan State. They cannot just rely on first and ten lining up and running the football against that front. That's Benny McGowan as a backup center but can slide into the guard position, which he's doing now. Is there a bigger challenge in college football than facing that Alabama defensive front? It is something to see how those guys not just dominate opponents, but dominate their teammates with leadership. It's it's authoritative. It's animated leadership from Ashawn Robinson and Jaron Reed and Jonathan Allen. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. I mean, I, I just impressive to watch their attitudes. Spartans playing fast on third down, trying to catch the tie, napping, and they do. The pass complete down inside the 40-yard line to Felton Davis, the true freshman. 
Well, I think Alabama, I think everybody was caught off a little bit surprised by the approach and the hurry up. They did not, be, they were not able to get their alignment and, and Michigan State caught Alabama out of position and Connor Cook with that experience makes them pay for it. Hits him right in the seam between the corner and the safety. First big play of the game, 28 yards on third and eight. And just the second catch for Davis, who's been the understudy this season of Aaron Burbridge. He's a feisty, confident guy, but rarely has had a chance to make plays. Burbridge now in the Wildcat as Cook has moved to the receiver. They'll do this from time to time. Burbridge circling back. Cannot escape. Drop for a loss. Gang tackling Dylan Lee, the linebacker, got there quickly. Yeah, the, the, the scouting report with Burbridge back there, you know he's not going to throw the ball, so you see a lot of crimson jerseys lined up to take him away. You see the bottom left there, Dylan Lee stays at home, in case of that cut back, and that's exactly where he needs to be, the discipline exactly perfectly placed there for Dylan Lee, but they really, the play side, defensive line and linebackers took that away, but when they see 16 back there, they are locked into the running game of Michigan State. It's a wrinkle that Dave Warner, the play caller, began to use late in the season. He was successful in that long drive against Iowa from time to time. Cook now back in the pocket, delivers incomplete across the middle. Tried to get it to R.J. Shelton in the slot, but the talented freshman, Minka Fitzpatrick, right with him. Well, that looked like a little bit of contact, the crowd reacting there. How about the protection that time with Connor Cook? Alabama just brought four. He had a lot of time there. Once again, on third down, Kirk, the Spartans trying to play fast and catch the tide, not ready. Cook, harassed and dropped for the first time back at midfield. And that's Jonathan Allen, his 11th sack of the season. The leadership group with his team flexing for the first time. You know, he's put 15 pounds of muscle on this year, and it's helped him. This is an example of what he can do right here, 93. He's dealing with Benny McGowan. He also goes right through Delton Williams. So the right guard and also the running back trying to slow him down, and they could not because of the strength. But Alabama, by rushing four, gets after Connor Cook. Allen, the junior, is all SEC. There's a whole bunch of guys on that unit that are going to be playing on Sundays for quite a few years. Plenty of scouts around tonight. So Hartbarger trying to knock it dead deep. Does a spectacular job of sideways bounce. And the coverage guys grab it at the two-yard line. Chris Fry, the linebacker, hustling down there. And now it's Coker's turn to get pinned back deep. Well, these two teams seem to be kind of feeling each other out. Special teams starting to become a factor because of field position. And there's Chris Fry out of Upper Arlington, Ohio, with a good effort there to keep the ball out of the end zone. They're actually down that at the four-yard line. We figured this would be a slugfest, uh, a test of will, physical and mental strength, perhaps well, right to the fourth quarter. That's where special teams and who's going to win the turnover margin will end up becoming a huge factor and ultimately who ends up winning this football game. Now will they feed Henry, who's lined up in the end zone. Again, they force him to kind of hop sideways. He can't do that, that typical Derrick Henry downhill move. You, know, you and I called the first game of the year right here when they played Wisconsin. We saw him a couple times running downhill and being able to break tackles. That's when he breaks tackles. You can see right now, we, you, if you watch the Clemson-Oklahoma game and you, you're sticking around to watch this and see who gets to the championship, as predicted, two completely different style of football games. Henry, 10 yards on his three carries so far. Has it again. Cuts back. Nothing there. Riley Buller, Lawrence Thomas, and Demetrius Cox, the safety, also in there. Yeah, we talked about Bulla and his quickness and his size. Right here in the middle, watch how he just comes downhill. He does not allow the lineman to get up to the second level because of how quick he is. Doesn't wait around to read, absorb the offensive line. As Soon as he makes his read, he is coming downhill right now, which is a lot, which really what allows him to make that play. Coker Drake needs, in the slot here. Coker needs to be very careful here. Third down and long. Drake's in motion. Fires back far side. Catch made by Stewart. It gets a block on the edge. Lowers his shoulder against Darian Hicks. 
And a first down. And a great block by Cam Robinson, the left tackle. What an effort to make a block on Darian Harris. Watch him come out. Harris is out there over the slot. Stewart, but watch that block right there. That's the left tackle getting out in space. Here's a great look at it right here. He's able to get out there, get Harris down, and open it up for Stewart to pick up the first down. And a great call there by Lane Kiffin. That's a 330-pounder moving very quickly. And Henry now, final minute of the first quarter. Muscles out near the 20. He's approaching 2,000 yards. In fact, needs one more to get to that milestone Looks of the like season. Bama's going to go tempo now as well. But a great call there by Lane Kiffin on third down. Taking the, the thinking aspect and having to read the coverage away from Jake Coker on third down and just making it a quick throw and an easy throw for Coker. Three receivers to the right. Again, he gets it out quickly to Stewart. He gets another good block on the edge. They're really working the perimeter much more than the middle, and they move the chains again. Now that's the most successful aspect of their attack in the first quarter. And Lane Kiffin told me actually today that he's concerned early in the game about Derrick Henry and being able to get on track. His answer, he thought coming in, would be to get the ball to the perimeter in a hurry. Michigan State will blitz. They play a lot of man-to-man. -man. They're soft right now in coverage, so it's an easy throw. And because of the quickness of these receivers, it's a smart call for Bama. Can Coker snap it before the clock expires in the first quarter? No, did not get it off. So 87 combined yards in a very defensive opening quarter in Arlington. Back after these messages, you're watching the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Sage Steele here in Times Square. Okay, I was just outside and everybody down there is multitasking and watching the game on their smartphones while helping Ryan Seacrest and company count down to 2016. That's all over on ABC right now. So trust me, you can multitask too. Check it out. All right, Sage, Happy New Year to you. I live in New York. I was one and done in Times Square. Did, did it once. That was, that was good. Uh, uh, that'd be enough for me, too. Back here at the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic in Arlington, a scoreless first quarter. Bama has held opponents now scoreless 10 times this year in the first quarter. Michigan State 7, so nothing unusual here. Nothing That's we didn't right. expect. That's right. I, knowing Lane Kiffin, at some point, he's going to have to take a shot against man-to-man -man pressure from Michigan State. Try to stretch this Michigan State defense. Flip it to Drake out of the backfield. And Kenyon, who brings an element of speed and versatility to the offense, scampers quickly out near the 40. And right now, the four in the second quarter, and you're thinking, where is Derrick Henry? He only has five carries for 15 yards. And early in this game, Lane Kiffin is thinking the Michigan State's entire month of preparation has been geared to stop number two. And he's trying to take advantage of some other areas, and he'll eventually get back to Derrick Henry. But right now, it's been quick throws to the perimeter, getting the ball to the speed of this Alabama offense, guys like Drake and Stewart and Ridley. He's got second and one, so the potential to take a shot right here if he wants to. Instead, they feed Henry. Henry barrels forward for a first down, and that puts him over the 2,000-yard mark for this spectacular junior season. Yeah, what, what, a, what a year he has had. And, now, such a big part of the way Alabama responded to their loss to Ole Miss at home when they started Cooper Bateman They were still trying to be kind of the offense with Blake Sims from a year ago And then settled on the running game of Henry and the play-action pass now. It's a two-back look Henry just runs over a man and spins for a game that doesn't look like much, but he gets five It doesn't look like much, but the wear and tear of those kind of runs they're like body blows in boxing body blow body blow Hicks and into took that, a blow <laughs> yeah, he sure did into the fourth quarter those those blows start to really add up Hicks is a 180 pound corner so he's giving away about 60 65 pounds to Henry yeah, and he came in there actually late it looks like Cox took the initial the, the brunt of the hit he's up, up and walking off which is good he's been such a big part of getting healthy these last four games for Michigan State and affected the entire secondary, which affected the entire defense. They played their best four games in the last four games of the year. Hicks missed some time this year with a concussion, also missed some time with mono. Injuries in the secondary, one reason why the no-fly zone for a while, that the legendary Spartan secondary yeah. slogan, it became the friendly skies for opponents. Yeah. They were throwing the ball downfield a lot. 48 passes at 20 yards or longer. That's the most that Mark D'Antonio's defense has ever given up. Coker to Henry, who powers forward near the marker. It'll be third and short for the Tide. More body blows. Yeah, it's interesting that 
The first quarter, it looks like, and again, he talked about this with Tom Rinaldi, he kind of had a vision or a plan, and as soon as we've gotten into this second quarter, he flipped that play sheet, and he's gone back to number two. Also flipped the tempo. Henry knocked down near the marker. Monte Nicholson cut him down. It's going to be short. So a decision for Saban from the plus 45. As you can see, Rears up go for it. I think he's inclined to do here. They tried to play fast there against Michigan State. Yeah, both teams are kind of, and they and they have it as part of their arsenal. They don't hang their hat on it the way you see some of the other teams around the country. But it's a nice little change up to try to get the defense out of position. We've again we've seen Cook do it, and and also Coker. So the offense staying on the field, huddling around Lane Kiffin and the white visor. They get a measurement here to see exactly how much they need on fourth down. Tied, not a real good team in terms of fourth down efficiency. Just 11 of 23 this year. Chris, I'll just say this, that because of the size and athletic ability of Coker, the quarterback sneak seems the most obvious because of the respect you have to have for Michigan State's defensive line. They can slip a gap, and if you go deep and hand it off to Henry and you get penetration, the play gets blown up. It seems like the quarterback sneak would be the safest call. The 11th play of this drive. Need about a football. Coker with big number two driving behind him does make the first down. Yeah, I mean, I know Derrick Henry's a great player, but uh, it, it's it's a big play because if you get stopped here, Michigan State gets the ball right at close to midfield. You can see the surge there led by the, the veteran Ryan Kelly in the middle. Howard, the tight end, and Henry just helping the quarterback. Yeah, and that's legal now. Henry with a nice little push from behind. Yep. Remember, everybody gets caught up in the bush push, and that's illegal, but any, now you're allowed to do that. A breather for Henry. It's Drake. Lined up at midfield. They fake it to him. Coker takes a downfield shot. Ridley has a step. Jump ball. Incomplete. Good coverage. Jermaine Edmondson was picked on a lot this season, Kirk. Made a nice play. Great coverage and a perfect time to call it on first and ten. They get man to man. This is a matchup that Ridley three will take every time. Physical there. And then at the end of the play, a great job of identifying where the football is by the junior out of Canton, Ohio. He goes up, high points the ball, and almost comes down with the interception. Remember that Nebraska game when they had so much trouble defending the Cornhusker passing game. Edmondson had a rough night, but he has grown and improved along with a bunch of guys in that secondary. This is Drake now. Not much. Riley Bulla, the top tackler, came flying through. It'll be third and long. It's a different gear. You know, as, as good as Henry is, he's a different kind of back. He runs downhill. You get the ball to Kenyon Drake because of that acceleration to the corner. Michigan State's got to be able to react. And how about Riley Bulla that time? Back-to-back -back plays by the Spartans' defense individually. Edmondson on the play downfield, and then Bulla that time on the run by Kenyon Drake. Both teams just one of four so far on third down. Both offenses have faced third and long a lot tonight. There's Shalik Calhoun, the pass rush guy. Coker gets protection, finds Drake, who spins free but does not get near the first down. Dropped at the 40. Demetrius Day-Day Cox, the safety, came up to disrupt things. And how about R.J. Williamson back? He has been out since week five where he had a, a bicep injury against Purdue. It's first time he's played since week five. A veteran, a fifth-year guy with great knowledge, did enough there to slow down Drake to allow the rest of the Michigan State defense to be able to corral Drake before he got a first down. Williamson, a leader who brings a lot of knowledge and helps the communication, but he hadn't played football in three months. I wondered how yeah. he'd be able to hold up tonight. So far, so good. It's a big stand by the Spartan defense, forcing a punt, which lands into the end zone. Who can break through first? It's Cook and the Spartans back to work next. The DirecTV Mobile Studio has been a busy place here in Dallas this week, providing coverage of the activities leading up to tonight's game. And really compelling triple header on New Year's Day, the Battle Frog Fiesta Bowl. You might be watching this one, the Buckeyes and the Fighting Irish at 1 o'clock Eastern time. The Rose Bowl, presented by Northwestern Mutual. 
McCaffrey and the Cardinal against Iowa. Then the All-State Sugar Bowl, Oklahoma State and Ole Miss. Michigan State with their play calling on first and ten. They've thrown it only twice, once for a pass interference, the other time for a 14-yard gain. And the fourth tailback to handle the ball for the Spartans already. This is Delton Williams, the junior, who makes a nice first down gain. Yeah, he kept his kept his legs moving. That's a heck of a gain. This is one of those games where you get four or five yards running the football, and you got to consider that a win. And Delton Williams showing some physicality that time, spinning off a couple would-be tacklers and picking up enough positive yards there on first and ten. So the drive chart for the Spartans. Six combined possessions, six punts so far. Williams now in a slot, empty backfield for Cook, who rolls and fires downfield to Shelton. Well covered. Here comes the second pass interference flag of the night. This one on Minka Fitzpatrick, who just never found the ball. Now Connor Cook got drilled by Reggie Ragland. I mean, drilled. And his shoulder was exposed to the contact. I mean, he, he, it's a half roll to the right. Look at the middle linebacker right there, lowers the boom. And if you see it in real time, you'll really appreciate what he dealt with there. I mean, he, he came in hard. Defense, number 29, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. In the meantime, Fitzpatrick flagged to the other end of the play. Cook told us, you know, shoulder aside, he's never worried, he said, about hits. In a football game, he always must keep his eyes downfield and standing in there in a pro style offense, it's part of it. And there's Minka Fitzpatrick, Chris, with his head completely facing the receiver. Second time we've seen that. You're right. Connor Cook is a tough guy. No question about that. Williams again, short gain. You know, Cook weighs 220. I think he's got a strong lower body, but kind of a slightly built upper body. He does not have a sculpted physique not like you or anything like that but he's come doing all right for himself just, I'm just messing with you my but, point is when a guy like Raglan hits him I know you know I'm just messing with you he's six, six four <laughs> two twenty and the thing about Cook is he playing 39 games think about that all-time winningest quarterback in school history as good as Alabama is there's nothing he hasn't seen or dealt with when it comes to the pressure of this kind of football game He fake it to Williams. Cook stands and delivers again, and a drop. That's a drop by Burbridge, who's a terrific receiver, all Big Ten competitor, but that was right in his hands. I, I keep talking about separation. Separation against press coverage. Can he do it? He does. He gets the separation. Now he just has to catch the ball. Perfect job by Burbridge. He's one of the top receivers in the country. He just couldn't hold on to it. Cook delivers over the middle again. Catch made by Paul Lang, the senior tight end. This is 11th of the season. They're finding space in the middle. Uh, uh, confused here by Alabama. There's a mix up here with Reuben Foster. Look at the middle. There's nobody in the middle. Foster's over here. He might be confused with the alignment, but he's wide open and Cook sees him quickly for the big game. The kind of laps that Nick Saban and Kirby Smart just ate. 17 yards on that third and nine play. We put the formation with the receivers into the boundary and it opened up the tight end to the field. We got an offense threatening here, Kirk, for the first time tonight. In plus territory. Cook harassed immediately and just has to heave the ball to the sidelines. Eddie Jackson came in a safety blitz and now a flag. They'll talk about whether this is grounding. I think they also had procedure there. Lang was a little confused on his alignment at the tight end spot, which impacted Burbridge. Illegal shift there. There is no foul on the play for intentional grounding. There was a receiver in the area. However, illegal shift on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Now, that's a liberal interpretation of the area. I, I didn't see any receiver near near the Alabama bench where that ball was thrown in there. Here, here, here's the hit again. Uh, he knew right. Look at Jackson right here coming on the blitz. Nobody there. He just aborts Jackson on the safety blitz. The play before Alabama was confused and it cost him. This time it's the Michigan State offense with a blunder with a clean hit on Connor Cook. Empty backfield. On first and 15, Williams moving to the slot. Cook fires incomplete. It was off the hands of McGarrett Kings. Fitzpatrick and Humphrey were covering closely. 
Well, Humphrey, 26 on one side, be, will be playing man-to-man -man all night. And you have Jones on the other side. Humphrey, 26, is much more physical because of his size. He's 6'1", about 195 pounds. He's a freshman, but he, because of his physicality, it makes it very tough to be able to get separation. And as tough as it is to make plays in this defense, Cook thinking, come on, guys, give me a little help. That's a yeah. drop from Burbridge and now from Kings already. Cook fires in, no chance, over the head of Josiah Price. It'll be third and 15. So a promising drive, then the penalty, and now Cook is backed up. And that's why we don't see a lot of first downs in this game, because against these two defenses, third and nine ain't going to work very often. And you'll see Alabama, they'll show pressure. In many can now they, they, they pressure 17% of the time. They like to show pressure and then drop, and they'll rush three or four and count on that defensive line to be able to get the pressure on the quarterback. Cook fires way over the head of R.J. Shelton. That's exactly what they did. They, they, they show pressure, they only rush three, and now you're talking about having eight guys in coverage, and as good as Connor Cook is with his accuracy and his anticipation, makes it very, very hard to be able to find somebody open with eight guys in coverage. So the mental mistake with the tied defense, but then they knuckle down, helped by that illegal shift penalty on first down. And another punt as Hartbarger tries to pin the tide deep again. Drops the point, kicks the backspin, and doesn't get the roll he was hoping for. A touchback. 8-14 to play until halftime. Scoreless in Arlington. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, brought to you by Allstate. Proud supporters of college football. Are you in good hands? Taco Bell's Crunchwrap Sliders, four full-size flavors, just a buck each. And Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And we appreciate Goodyear providing our aerial coverage once again. Kick off your drive with tires that return superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. Not much driving by the offenses tonight, but a game that Tom Izzo would appreciate. The Spartan football team in the final four here. He's taken the basketball team to the Final Four seven times, including last year, one national championship. Great friend and almost a neighbor of Mark yeah. Antonio in East Lansing. Yeah, and just a, a big football fan. Yeah. Uh, you know, and Nick Saban talked about when he coached in East Lansing how much Tom Izzo, uh, how big a football fan he was. There's the whole, the whole team. Spartan basketball team lost for the first time this week at Iowa, and he flew them all down here despite the loss. So it's Drake, not Henry, in the game. And Coker looking to throw on first down. Richard Mullaney, the graduate transfer from Oregon State with a first down catch to the 35. Well, nice job with the linebackers here. Watch how the linebackers, Reshke and Bola, watch how they split. They split. It opens up right in the middle. The patience there by Coker is amazing. But the offensive line doing a nice job of giving him time. He needed every second there before McDowell lowered the boom. But a good route, well-designed, opened up right over the middle. Spartan fans glad to see McDowell back in there. The trainers were looking at him in the last defensive series. Now Henry dropped for a loss. And that was Malik McDowell. The sophomore from Detroit, the five-star recruit flying in. And, and Chris, you really have to appreciate, he's going against Ryan Kelly, a senior, one of the best centers in the country. Watch how he works to get to this gap. He has to deal with the center. He works with him, uses his hands, gets off of it, and tackles the Heisman Trophy winner. 13th tackle for loss, a great sophomore season by McDowell. He's going to be draft eligible next year in a very highly rated prospect. Poker. To Stewart. Again, on the edge. He's knocked out of bounds. Colhoun did a good job holding his ground. And it'll be third and long yet again. You know, Ridley right now with three uh, three receptions, most of them to the outside. Stewart with four receptions. A lot of receptions and a lot of attacking to the perimeter. But Michigan State doing a good job of forcing them into these third downs yet again. Now his completions have averaged six and a half yards. Nothing downfield yet for the Tide. Yeah. 
Spartans bring pressure. Coker delivers complete once again. A catch made by Stewart, and it was knocked out of bounds near midfield by Nicholson. You know, it, it's third down and long. You've been giving Coker fits. You press, or you, you, you bring the blitz, but look at the cushion. Makes it so easy for Coker to anticipate and get the ball out to Stewart. Very surprised that Colhoun was not tighter with the cover with the blitz from Michigan State. It made it easy for Coker to recognize it, put the ball out there to Stewart, and it's a first down. Almost like they're wary of that downfield shot you keep anticipating. Play action on first down. Coker will take a shot. Ridley. Holds it in! We waited, we wondered. It's coming. For the first home run shot. Not quite a home run, but he stopped at the one. And, and they don't reroute him. A little inside move, and he gets one-on-one -on -one matchup against Demetrius Cox. It's exactly what they wanted. What they do is they play fast after a big play. The Spartans were still running guys off of the field as Henry took the handoff. They don't use tempo very often, but they often do after a big play. Yeah, they try to catch him off guard. Michigan State ready for it. But how about the throw by Jake Coker? He puts it right on the money to Ridley. Ridley trying to get that ball across, but he's definitely short. Substitution defense, more than 11 players on the field at the snap. The offense did not substitute. Half the distance to the goal, replay first down. You can almost expect Bama's going to do that yeah. after a big play, and yeah. the Spartans try to... You get the short yardage guys in there, but smart. couldn't do it. Yep, smart for Alabama without substituting. They're able to go as fast as they want. Michigan State not able to substitute, and they catch them with more than more than 11 on the field. A 50-yard play to Ridley moves the ball inside the one. Three in the backfield. Henry, that's easy. Pure muscle, and Alabama strikes first. Chris, it's a package that Alabama fans got to love. Look at the big defensive tackles. How'd you like to follow that? And you got the Heisman Trophy winner, Ashawn Robinson, Jaron Reed leading the way. And they opened it up very nicely there for Derrick Henry. That's a lot of girth coming at that Michigan State defense. Those are a lot of big, nasty guys who had to enjoy the chance to deliver a downhill block like that. We sucked up the leadership of this team, those defensive linemen. Play a part in the first touchdown of this game, and Derrick Henry, his 24th rushing TD of the season, that is a new SEC record, all his own now. Griffith's kick goes out of bounds, so Michigan State will take over at the 35. That play covered 50 of the 80 yards in that drive, and Coker, four for four on the drive. Yeah, he was. In command, when he throws on early downs, play Free action pass. Bounds. Michigan State is elected to take the ball at the 35-yard line, first down. That, that's where he feels, I think, most confident. You got Derrick Henry, the concern of the running game. You put the play action look in there. He's in rhythm, and he's able to make great throws like he just did there to Ridley. Ken Cook and the Spartans answer now. Sage Steele here in New York City, Times Square, where everyone is talking about college football. Yes, including Ryan Seacrest, who will join me coming up at halftime. Thank you, Sage. Here's the countdown clock on an evening known for the ball dropping. It's been too much of that for the Spartan receivers. For a couple of drops, you know, Shelton, Burbridge, Kings, their top three receivers have been shut out so far by this tie defense. L.J. Scott, the freshman late season workhorse, is the back now. Takes the handoff from Connor Cook, who himself has certainly been hit a lot. Kirk, he's four for ten, but he's been taking some punishment. He has, and that was a big question coming in, how the right shoulder would hurry up. And it's not so much the sacks. He has one sack, but... And he knew coming in, Chris, we talked to him a couple days ago about are you ready to be hit because you're going to be hit a lot. And he said he was, and so far he's stood strong, but he needs help. Not only is he not getting the ball to his favorite targets, Michigan State right now, they've only run the football for three yards. It's a bad combination when your go-to receivers aren't making plays and you're not running the ball. From the pocket, delivers into traffic, and again, over the head 
of Shelton has been targeted frequently, but no catches yet. Now that is a tight window. Connor Cook has such confidence in his ability to make the right read and get the ball to his receiver. That ball overthrown, but with the coverage there by Fitzpatrick, he was fortunate the ball wasn't tipped and possibly intercepted. Once again, Spartans facing third and long. Tide showing pressure, and they do bring five rushers. Cook, flushed, hit, dropped. Ryan Anderson, the linebacker, got him. And I don't know how he held on to that. Ryan Anderson comes from the right of the offense. He's over here. He does a good job, but I think it's the blitz pressure that time from Reuben Foster in the middle that occupied the interior of the offensive line for Michigan State, and it freed off Anderson off the edge. Now, you hear so much about some of these other defensive linemen, but it's the depth. Guys like Ryan Anderson and Tim Williams that get pressure, especially on third down. And I'll tell you, Connor Cook, lucky to hold on to that ball. Yeah, he had to shift the ball, didn't he, at the last yeah. second to the left hand to avoid the fumble. Hartbarger boots it. Cyrus Jones from the 20 gets an initial block, bounces off a man, and dances down across the 26-yard line. Well, we knew this would be a, a very different game stylistically. Clemson so impressive. Trailed at halftime, but a 21-zip edge over the Sooners, so they await the winner of this slugfest a week from Monday. What, what a different game and a different feel with the offenses in that game and the quarterbacks in that game going back and forth. And Deshaun Watson and Clemson give them all the credit in the world, finding a way to win that football game. And you heard Dabo Sweeney afterwards. Nobody believes in us. Nobody does except for us. And that's what makes this so special. And he's right. This football team is on a mission, and the winner of this game is going to have their hands full against that, that Clemson Tiger football team. Yeah, we got Salto, Salty Dabo again after that game, but what a tremendous job he and his staff have done. Tide trying to add to the lead here. Four minutes to halftime, and Coker feeling good about himself. Finds O.J. Howard in the veteran tight end. His first catch out across the 40, and a flag where Coker was hit by McDowell after he got rid of it. And McDowell came in high on... Jake Coker, who's shown a tremendous amount of toughness this year when he won the quarterback job back against Ole Miss. I think that's, Nick Saban's mentioned this, that's where he won the team over, is some of his scrambles and the grit and determination that he's played with, and he shows it there again there. There is no there. foul on the play for intentionally, for roughing the passer, contact him through the chest. So the flag is picked up, but the gain moves the ball across the 40. You know, let's see if the contact, the initial contact is up high. They, they felt that initially it was a penalty, but then went back and talked as a group, which you love to see, and they felt it was in the, in the chest area, and then he slid up into the face mask. And it's always great when the, uh, the crew gets together and talks about it. Sometimes they have different perspective and a different view. Big 12 crew here tonight. The Tide did not approve of that call. You know, some movement. Ball start. And Derrick Henry. Offense, number two. Five-yard penalty, first down. He was on his tippy toes trying not to trying not to lose his balance. Michigan State looked like they were trying to mix in some pressure. You know, with that injury to, to Hicks, he's been so instrumental in the talk about Michigan State improving their last four games. He is out of the lineup, so Colhoun on one side and Jermaine Edmondson on the other. And as much man-to-man -man as they play, Alabama will continue to challenge and go after that. Henry, first and 15, tries to cut it back. Coker throws a block. Henry is just tracked down at the 40. Colhoun just grabbed him by the shoe, or it would have been a huge gain. It's a great example of his vision. I don't know if enough people really appreciate the way he is a big guy has an ability to get off of a play and then abort and come all the way back the other way. Michigan State very fortunate that Cole Hoon somehow is able to make that tackle because if he doesn't, it's without a doubt a first down and more yards after that. But good effort by Cole Hoon there to stay home and catch up to Henry to bring him down. Yeah, a no carry yet. Has Henry really been able to get that big body rolling, get up ahead of steam? Got to hurry here. Three in the play clock, and Coker will take a timeout. They'll spend the first of their three here as the Tide try to add to their lead before halftime.
to Taco Bell student section. Taco Bell and the college football playoff provided 1,000 student tickets tonight free so that students could come down to Arlington and cheer on their teams, whether they're Spartans or Crimson Tide. A ticket to the Natty, as Dabo Sweeney called it, against his Clemson Tigers, January 11th in Glendale. At stake here in the Tide with a touchdown set up by the long pass to Ridley on their last possession. Kirk getting the ball to begin the second half. This feels like an, an important moment for this Spartan defense to make a stand. Prevent this lead from getting any bigger with the way their offense has struggled. Coker and a flag before the snap again. And a left tackle that time, Cam Robinson, getting back in his stance. It'll cost Alabama five more yards. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 74. Five-yard penalty, second down. You're right about the timing of this drive. Starting to get close to getting to the near the end of this first half and Michigan State's offense with only 61 yards in the first half. With the way this game feels and Alabama getting the ball, you're exactly right. It's a big, big possession. We've seen Saban and Lane Kiffin often get very aggressive near the end of the first half. He's a big believer in that the games can be won and lost late in the half. Coker downfield shot. Howard is wide open, makes the catch, running free inside the 25. Colhoun drove him out. Howard told me, Kirk, I just have to wait and be patient and then make my chances count. Uh, and he gets matched up against the corner who actually hesitated. You can see him. He gets in the way there of Reschke. And because he gets behind a couple steps, it makes it easy for Howard to outrun him and a good throw by Coker. And again, tempo after the big play as Coker fires far side, but flying into knockdown Stewart was Jermaine Edmondson. You go back to that play, you could see that this ball, this is what Coker does the best, is when he's able to get back, one hitch, put the ball up in the air to his receivers downfield. That's why I came into this game. It wasn't so much Henry about defending Henry for Michigan State. My concern was, could Michigan State, who plays so much man-to-man, -man, match up against the tight end Howard and this group of wide receivers and avoid giving up the big play? It's Drake in the backfield. They fake it to him. Coker has to escape pressure off the edge and now just fire it into the bench. You know, Howard is such a talented guy. Todd McShay has him rated one of the top tight ends in the country. He says he has to avoid pouting because he doesn't see the ball you know, no. all that much. That was just his 31st catch this season. Yeah, and, and I mean, Ridley has caught majority of the balls as this season has progressed, and Stewart has also done a nice job of coming up with some big plays. But, Chris, it, it's not about keeping O.J. Howard happy. Th this offense has found an identity, and it's Derrick Henry, and it's play-action pass and playing great defense. Oh, he that, knows that. He's a great yeah, blocker, yeah, so he and, contributes and that, to that run Absolutely. Game. He does contribute to it. And I get I get that you know, it's, it gets a little bit frustrating, but it sure is working. Oh, Coker bobbles the snap. The play is all messed up, running for his life, and just fires it to Drake, who should have dropped the ball. He makes the catch, but it's a loss on the far side. Yeah, but every, every yard matters when you're trying to get a field goal, yeah. and he's better off throwing that football away instead of, throwing it there to Drake yeah, who instinctively is going to make yeah, the catch yeah I mean but it, it is it, a loss it, because the ball was a perfect snap goes right through his hands luckily his face mask was in the way or that ball would have gone right by him that they brought pressure again Michigan State did with Bull on the blitz it backs up Adam Griffith is that a terrific season since he got off to a rough start he missed two field goals here in the opener against Wisconsin missed his first four but he's come on strong 21 of 29 for the season. This from 47 for a 10 point lead. And he knocks it through. For the kicker, born in Poland, adopted by parents in Georgia, makes it a 10 point lead with a minute 25 before halftime. So, celebrating the 11th season, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicks. To date, millions have been contributed by Allstate. Connor Cook, 4 of 11 for only 62 yards. But I, I, I'll say this they're, they're down 10. 
Alabama gets the ball to start the second half because of the experience of Cook and the confidence the coaches have in him. Sometimes when a quarterback and an offense, they're just struggling to find anything that works. Sometimes by getting into a two-minute offense and you're not thinking as much, you can get the defense on its heels a little bit. Connor Cook is like a coach out there. He's like an offensive coordinator. So Michigan State needs to be aggressive here, put the ball into the hands of Connor Cook, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him find a rhythm here. Kirk sacked a couple of times. They have negative one net rushing yards. But even if you take out the sacks, the 10 runs, total 10 yards against the Tide so far. Ouch. Welcome to the Alabama front seven. Cannot be a comfortable feeling for Cook knowing they are basically one-dimensional at this point. Well, we talked about Capital One Bowl mania continuing tomorrow from 11 o'clock at ESPN2. The Wildcats of Northwestern take on Tennessee in the Outback Bowl. So Big Ten versus SEC, 1 o'clock over on ABC. Another Big Ten SEC collision, the Wolverines and the Florida Gators, the Buffalo Wild Wings. Citrus Bowl also streaming live on the watch app. That's an intriguing matchup Wolverines and the Gators. Yeah, it's, it's anytime you get a chance to see these big conferences compete against each other. You know, you always have bragging rights on the line. It's this might be high scoring compared to what we're going to see in that game. Right? <laughs> right. Let's see if Connor <laughs> Cook gets aggressive here and see if his receivers can get open and try to get off this this coverage is tight coverage from Alabama. We got three timeouts and a minute 25 to work with. Gerald Holmes stays in to block the blitz and it's a low throw they finally move the chains that's a catch by Burbridge his first yeah, one, of, one of the rare times at Burbridge and Cook in sync and as I said now you get aggressive here you get this defense try to get this defense on its heels Spartans do employ tempo Cook in the pocket flips it short Holmes cannot escape Reggie Ragland a short game yeah, Michigan State has three timeouts they'll use one here they're thinking at the very least they want to give Michael Geiger a chance the junior a chance to at least have an, a shot at a field goal well John Saunders Mark May Mac Brown perched in their set I can see him over there on the concourse level the Buick halftime report is coming up we'll recap Clemson's emphatic win on the Capital One Orange Bowl Houston a nice win on the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl over the Seminoles earlier today and of course they'll break down first half here and look ahead to what this group right here is going to have to do to try to solve a very stout defense It'd be nice uh, to be able to again trying to get Connor Cook into a rhythm is tough to do against this Alabama defense remember they apply pressure they keep two safeties high which makes it tough to get the ball thrown downfield then they've got five guys underneath which makes the, the windows the passing lanes just tough for Connor Cook and his receivers the timing and anticipation has to be perfect for Connor Cook Cook on second and seven steps up delivers another strike across the middle to Shelton and they'll Move the chains into Alabama territory inside of a minute now. Nice job working back into the middle again. We saw a throw earlier to Burbridge. This time Shelton working to get into the middle. Cook again. Tight coverage over there. Tried to get it to Price, but Ronnie Harrison, the true freshman, was there. Yeah, you go back and look at the pressure. Robinson. Off the pinky. So close to knocking that ball. I thought it had a little bit of a yeah. after the throw it, it looked a little bit odd but it was, he had enough on it to give Shelton a chance by the way Robinson the last two plays they're not blitzing they're rushing four. Robinson the last two he's been right in the face of Connor Cook you also have Tim Williams in who will be off to the deep the offense is left Robinson a hometown guy played his high school football just up the road in Fort Worth. Cook as the pocket collapses he goes down again and that time Jonathan Allen for the second time tonight knocks down the quarterback because of the way they can get after you on the outside they match up they get one-on-one -on -one matchups on the inside Allen is right to the right side there he's able to push through you talk about making sure you're on the same page you cannot take one wrong step because it's not just one guy you're trying to keep out it's four all four of them are in a race to get to Connor Cook. 
That is a bull rush. Oh, Cody Keeler, the tackle, had his helmet knocked off in the fray down there. And that Alabama front seven, the best around. Yeah, there, there's no doubt about it. And the scouting report coming into this is how could Michigan State hold up? And there's Ashawn Robinson early in this game taking on a couple blocks and forcing Scott to the outside where the rest of the defense is able to help out. Big Jaron Reed in the middle as well. Just too much to handle. It's not just the size. It's 313 pounds. All these guys have made a, a, a effort in the offseason to drop about 15 to 20 pounds. You know, the days of big Terrence Cody playing in Alabama are over. You go and watch these guys and you see them in person. They're 313 pounds, but their stomachs are flat and they move <laughs> quick. So it's a combination of power and quickness. And the intangibles that they bring. We've both been impressed by the leadership of these guys. They, they basically run the team, don't they? The defensive oh, line. Without a doubt. In Along terms of the players. Yep. Third and 18 for Cook. Fires complete to Kings, who makes the catch, takes a hit at the 30-yard line. Clutch with 35 seconds left. That is a big third down throw and a great job of anticipating. That's where the relationship and experience between Cook and Kings comes in. That time he threw that well before Kings had turned around. If the Spartans can get back in this game, remember that play. They still have the one timeout. Cook fires far side in the coverage and a leaping catch by Burbridge over Jones at the 12. You know, you want to get to the national championship, your best players have got to make plays. And that's what's happening for the first time all night for this Michigan State offense. And now they've got the big Alabama bodies breathing heavily from the 12. Cook takes a shot, picked off Jones along the sidelines. And Cook with a crucial mistake as the time pick him off for the first time with six seconds before halftime. Burbridge makes a big play, the play before. Chris, that is textbook by Cyrus Jones. Anticipating, looking back over his shoulder. Watch his technique at the top. Watch how he's anticipating and waiting for it, and he goes up and makes the play. Connor Cook telegraphs the throw. He completely stares down his wide receiver, which allowed Jones to be able to be ready to go up and make the play and take the ball away from Burbridge. Cook is normally very smart in the red zone. That's only his, That's as you see Kirby smart, that's just his second red zone pick uh, he, this year. And they had, at the very least, they had a chance at a field goal and possibly a touchdown. Henry on the final play of the half. He's been limited in this first half. It's been Coker looking sharp. The big play to Ridley to set up the long touchdown and a smothering Alabama defense as they'll get the football to begin the second half with a double digit lead. Let's go to Tom Rinaldi with Coach Saban. Chris, thank you very much. I know how much you hate to give up points toward the end of a half. How do you continue this defensive performance and how important was the stop? Man? Well, we didn't play really well in the two minute there. You know, we turned some guys loose and didn't cover like we need to, but it was big to get an interception to keep them off the board. We got to finish some drives on offense and, you know, we're hurting ourselves with penalties and stopping ourselves too much. Good luck in the second half. All right. Let's go over to Heather with Coach D. Thank you so much, Coach. Your team is known for finding a way to finish. What do you need to do to make that happen in the second half? You know, we got a chance for points down here at the end, you know, and sort of gave it up. And uh, But uh, you know, we got to run the ball more effectively. I think, you know, we played pretty well defensively. We gave up the two paint passes, and that's resulted in points. But, uh, you know, you got to keep playing. got to come up with some turnovers, and things got to go our way a little bit. But got to find a way to run the ball and balance it up. Coach, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Chris, back up to you. Andrew, thank you. That was a 63-yard drive that comes up empty with the Jones pick. And as Tonio said, that, that really stings. Alabama up 10 at halftime here in Arlington. Stay tuned after these messages for the Buick Halftime Report. Welcome to the Buick Halftime Report. Well, Michigan State is used to coming back from problems at halftime in their last four bowl games. But boy, they did not want this to happen. Connor Cook picked up by Cy Jones and Alabama with a 10 to nothing lead at halftime. John Saunders alongside of Mark May and coach Mac Brown. 
And gentlemen, it's interesting because we expected this one to be a bit of a grind, but it was the deep ball that really broke this game open. And it was the true freshman, Calvin Ridley, did a terrific job off the play action pass. Michigan State has to respect Derrick Henry in the run. But what happens is Jake Coker fakes it to him in a play action pass over the top. Calvin Ridley with his speed. He's led the team in receptions and receiving yards all season long. He's been clutch, gets behind the defense right here, just outruns the defenders, gets tackled on the one yard line. Derrick Henry punches it in for Bama's first score. You got to put eight in the box if you're Michigan State because you got to stop the big guy. And you know you got to stop their best player. They've done a good job of that. But then you've got to win the one on ones deep. And right now they threw the interception, which was a real killer of momentum right before the half. And Alabama with Coker have hit the two deep balls that led to points. And if you think that Connor Cook is your advantage, which many people thought coming into this game that Connor Cook was the advantage at quarterback, that certainly hurts you that he, of course, threw that interception. When we come back, we're going to look back at what was a very good first semifinal between Clemson and Oklahoma. CAA. Everything on ESPN is now streaming live on the ESPN app. And we've taken two things you love and made it one thing. The Watch ESPN app is now the ESPN app. Download it now. The Nick Saban is a perfect 8-0 when coaching against former assistants, if that's going to stay this way, maybe what has to happen in the second half for Alabama? To see a heavy dose of running back Derrick Henry to move the chains, kill the clock, and limit the possessions of the Michigan State offense. Michigan State's not going to lay down and quit, John. They've been behind double digits the last four bowl games. But Connor Cook's got to stay balanced, and he's got to play his best football game for Michigan State to win this one. A wise man said, though, those four bowl games, None of them were against Alabama and the Crimson Tide, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but still a very close game. Our second half is coming up. This halftime report is presented by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic set for the second half. A ticket to the championship game in Glendale, Arizona, opposite the Clemson Tigers at stake here. Alabama leading 10 zip as Connor Cook drove the Spartans into scoring position, but threw an interception to Cyrus Jones at the end of the half. Derrick Henry, Jake Coker, and the tight offense will get the ball to begin the third quarter here. Drive came up empty, which stings only Cook's second red zone pick but did they seize on something that they can apply in the third and fourth quarter yeah I, I, we talked before they got the ball about how sometimes a quarterback that struggled in the first half has a sense of urgency and it allows him to get up to the line of scrimmage and it puts the defense a little bit more in reactive mode i think we saw that i wouldn't be surprised to see them maybe work that into their attack not because they're down 10 uh, but because I think it was effective. So let, let's see what they do with Dave Warner and Jim Bowman as they get ready for the second half. But Connor Cook's going to have to be able to get them back into this game throwing the ball. Now let's go to Tom Rinaldi. Chris, beyond the strategic and schematic adjustments that were made at halftime, the message was simple from Coach Nick Saban to his team. Finish. Finish drives and finish this game. Those players in that locker room understand where they were a year ago with a lead at halftime at this stage over Ohio State, ultimately only to falter. Finish has been the mantra all season long. Never will it be more important for the Tide than in the next 30 minutes. Now let's go across the field to Heather for more on the Spartans. Heather? Tom, thanks so much. Michigan State doctors told me despite all the hits that Connor Cook took in the first half, he did not receive any treatment in the locker room at halftime. You heard Mark D'Antonio tell me they have to establish the run game. I spent more time with him and asked how. He said we need to continue to find that balance. The O-line has to create more gaps, and we will continue to use all four running gap running backs in the run game. He also said we have to use some designed quarterback run plays it worked against Ole Miss they're hoping it works for them here in the second half guys yeah, they're minus nine that rushing yards in the first half for the Spartans and one of the thing we can't overlook is the performance of, of Jake Coker a guy who's been through so much this year named captain by his teammates after the SEC championship game against the Gators probably the greatest honor he's received in his life he's played well in his first half 
Cronin's kick and goes through the end zone. You know, you heard Tom say pregame that Coker's performance early would dictate how Lane Kiffin would call this game. He had to be reassured, Kirk, because Coker was sharp, 16 of 20, 177 yards, the one big play to Ridley of 50 yards to set up the touchdown run. And, and if we were to break down his passes, there would be a lot of passes that were, you know, five yards or less downfield. But what that did which we knew was coming is it opened up opportunities down the field the, the throw to Ridley we saw the throw to Howard and that's what I think you're going to see more of from Lane Kiffin and Jake Coker here it's the work Derrick Henry in but you're going to see them eventually take shots downfield and try to continue to try to hit big plays they want to finish and part of finishing is still putting the foot on the accelerator and attacking this Michigan State defense. Derrick held four yards per carry below his season average just 2.9 for carry on his 13 attempts but he did go over 2,000 yards for the season and now Coker thought about finding Drake on first down delivers and said to Mullaney who is wide open slips a tackle and moves into Michigan State territory the outlet receiver comes up big well, that's a great job by Coker with his vision a little pump fake right there gets the linebacker out of position and the man-to-man -man coverage, they completely lose Mullaney, who is left alone, and a good job by Coker recognizing it and getting the ball. 26 yards, second catch for Mullaney. And the Tide quickly trying to add to their lead. Henry, not much, and a nice job by Lawrence Thomas off the edge to knock the big man down for a yard loss. Yeah, nice job by the inside of that defense as well. Thomas cleaned it up, but it was the interior that held their point. Also, Riley Bulla getting involved there, and then the big fella Thomas coming off the edge at over 305 pounds. You know, Alabama has a way, Kirk, with that defense of making a 10-point lead feel pretty big and if they yeah. add to it here if you're Michigan State you're thinking worst case a field goal you'd love to get them off the field but a field goal is all they really can afford at this point Stewart takes a little pot pass from Coker makes a man miss and gets knocked down at the 45 a slow night for Derrick Henry you knew it'd be tough against this Michigan State defense Tonight he's had it 14 times. Remember, he's had it, what, 90 times in their last two games exactly. between Auburn and Florida. Here's a third down opportunity for Michigan State. Henry motions out. Coker has plenty of time. A flag comes down incomplete. Darian Harris was covering Stewart. A couple of flags on the field. Two separate fouls. They have been start, spotted once in the holding zone. Then one was out near where Harris was covering the receiver. I think these will be offsetting. You had a holding on the offensive line and pass interference by the defense. There are two fouls, both on the defense. Holding defense. I was holding up front. That penalty's declined. Personal foul, hands to the face. Defense number 93, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Nose you know, tackle, Damon Knox guilty of the personal foul. I thought, I thought Taylor right here, the right guard, and and Knox right here. I thought it might be a hold, but watch his hands. Knox's hands get up right there. The umpire right on top of it. He was actually behind Knox. Somehow was able to have, be able to see that, but. Thought there might be a hold, but instead it goes against Michigan State. Yeah, it's the first major penalty on the Spartans, and it stings. It moves the ball to the 30. Gives the tie to first down, of course. Eventually, Drake's going to get matched up against the linebacker. Run a wheel route. Could be wide open down the sideline. Coker was surprised by the snap. Backpedaling. Delivers a strike to Ridley as... Calhoun closed in on him. That was a nice throw. Sure was. And he was actually looking to get the ball thrown down the middle. He comes off of Drake and gets the ball thrown back. And how about Ridley working to get back to give his quarterback a chance to be able to convert there? And he got six. Drake to the right of Coker. Takes the handoff and is knocked down immediately. Greg Evans made his presence felt. Big 318 pounder 
Michigan State a lot like Alabama rotating a lot of people inside not just Thomas McDowell Heath and Calhoun but we're seeing Craig Evans Damon Knox Evan Jones Demetrius Cooper they rotate eight people up front to try to stay fresh Spartan defense asking for some crowd noise here another third down side need four and Coke hoping when he gets the ball back the deficit won't be a lot bigger Fake it to Henry, Coker, bootleg, Howard, another catch, driven out, first down, Alabama at the 18. Now he's lined up as an H-back, they go play action this way, here's Howard who slips out into the flat and gets lost from the linebackers in coverage. All the action goes to the left, he boots because of the athletic ability to get outside in case there's pressure. The confidence right now that Jake Coker is playing with, Chris, very, very impressive. You said his journey has been a long one, a difficult one, a challenging one to get to this season. And he said he's living a dream now, quarterbacking Alabama to a SEC championship, perhaps bigger things. And Coker keeps it. Flag comes down as he is driven down hard by Lawrence Thomas. Coker's big brother, Patrick, an Air Force captain stationed in Turkey, drives A-10 Warthogs into the Middle East, into harm's way, and a couple of different brothers that the family could be proud of. I, I think Patrick, First the idol foul, of Jake. Hands to the face, defense number four. Half the distance from the goal from the end of the run, automatic first down. A second costly personal foul against right, the Spartans on this drive. Right, right, right over Ryan Kelly, the center. You see it right here. McDowell with his left hand gets up into the face of Kelly. Second time in a row. It's right side of your screen here. Look at that hand up into the face of Kelly. Another good call. The umpire, second time we've seen that in the last few plays. Very similar penalty, and it's moved the ball inside the 10. First and goal. Big Henry diving to the five. Jay Coker's parents from Mobile. Again, we send our, our salute to Jake's brother, Patrick, the Air Force captain. Hopefully able to watch this game, was able to get home and watch one Alabama game in person just before he wow. had to go back and get redeployed. Uh, must be really cool to have a chance to watch your brother play in a semifinal game after everything that he's been through. No doubt. Coker. End zone, Ridley, jump ball. Incomplete. Edmondson was battling him and made the play. You know, for a guy that wasn't expected to play a lot tonight, with the injury to Darian Hicks, Edmondson is out there playing, and he is working hard on an island. Last second, gets his hands up, recognizes the football, and because of that effort there, and the crowd's reacting, but Ridley did not have complete possession of the ball while he was in bounds. He's still battling for the ball. Then we may take a peek at this. He ends up catching it. Is the ball moving is the one question. There's a pylon cam look at it. He definitely does catch the ball, but oh, yeah. does he have possession when he steps out right there? Let's bring in Dave Kataya, rules expert. Dave, how did you see this one? Ruled incomplete on the field. Well, based on these two shots, the ball was moving, and it looks like that play's going to stand as called. I don't see enough there to change it to a possessed pass. Take a look at it here. You can see as Kirk said, it's still moving, moving. Both players are met, are moving the ball. All right, right now, right now, it looks like it's going to stand because of that ball moving. What a what a great catch by Ridley. Right, whether or not it stands, I mean, yeah. you talk about hand strength. Great effort by both Edmondson and also Ridley in the focus, as you said. And I don't think his heel is out of bounds. So if they end up saying that the ball, in fact, did not keep moving, both his steps are in bounds. I that step and that doesn't step. Doesn't have it yet. Does he have it there? That's the question. Yeah, both, both his feet, Dave, are in bounds there. I thought the heel might have come down out of bounds, but it's in bounds. Watch this. This is a great view. No question both feet are in bounds. That, that's not the issue. The issue is does he possess the ball before he crosses the sideline? It looks like he does, but again, we've got to be 100% before they're going to reverse the call on the field. Right. Just at the last second, the ball seemed to be sliding up the jersey of Ridley. He certainly thinks he made the catch. Fans are getting repeated tremendous looks at this on the giant screen above us. 
Ridley of course who made the 50 yard play to set up Stewart's or Henry's short touchdown run. You know with this offense changing their There's approach. Mike DeFee. After further review the receiver got his right foot down in the end zone with possession. Touchdown. What a play by Calvin Ridley the freshman as the call on the field is overturned and the tide has stretched their lead. Yeah, I, I, and, and I think Dave, you know, that, that's a call you and I and every person watching this, you might get it, half the people say that it was the ball was moving, the other half might say that it, it was not. The, both his feet ended up being in bounds and they must have felt that it, the ball was secured as he stepped on that second step and eventually out of bounds. But it's a touchdown, and now Michigan State down 17. Griffith with the conversion. The Tide take the second half kickoff. March 75 yards in nine plays. Coker to Ridley with a touchdown, and the Coker family says, yes, we're getting a little closer to the championship game. The National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper, raised by the Buckeyes on this field with all the confetti falling a year ago. We'll head out to Glendale, Arizona, a week from Monday, January 11th, where Clemson will take on the winner here. Right to lift that trophy for the 2015 season. Two personal fouls on that drive, aiding Alabama's cause. And Coker to Ridley on the reversal, and Jake continues to have a spectacular night for 21 of 25, 224. AT&T's strongest of the strong certainly applies to the Alabama defensive front and the run stopping going back the last eight quarters. So the second half of the Iron Bowl, SEC championship game, first half tonight, a grand total of seven rushing yards allowed. Well, we knew it'd be very, very tough. Michigan State felt confident that they could match up with Alabama in the trenches, uh, but so far, negative nine yards rushing. For Michigan State and now down 17 you're in predictable play calling for Connor Cook it gets that much more challenging for them to execute and try to be able to come up with yardage and try to get first downs see how Kirby Smart again had about 15 guys on the field they're waiting to see the personnel they run four guys off it's Mondre London the tailback behind Cook and they give it to him and the middle is just clogged and once again as you've often said this season, that's just not open for business no. tonight, the interior run game. <laughs> no, not, not at all. They try to bounce it with the counter play and try to get the ball to the edge. They pick up a couple yards. But as I said, Chris, and right now they're just, they're, it's still early. You get 10, 10, 15 to go here in the third quarter. They're, they're, they're not going to just throw the ball every play. They're doing enough to make Alabama have to respect that they potentially going to run the ball. But we all know that Connor Cook and his receivers, we knew when the game started, his receivers and Connor Cook would have to make plays. They fake it to London. Cook escapes the pressure by rolling out and now will scoot out of bounds after a short game knocked down on the Alabama bench. It'll be third and long yet again. Alabama, one of the top defenses in the country at getting pressure on quarterbacks. In fact, lead the nation with 46 sacks, one of the best on third down. Tonight's been tough for Michigan State, three of eight on third down. A couple of sacks already for big Jonathan Allen, number 93. You can feel the urgency. White and green and third and six. Cook has protection, but the ball's batted up in the air. Caught by a Spartan. It's McGarrett Kings off the carom. Allen knocked the ball down. The catch made short of the first down, however. You're actually going to see Aaron Burbridge work right here, right there. If he sees him right there, it's a first down and maybe more yards after the catch. Instead, he's not able to locate Burbridge. He ends up coming over to the outside. And of course, Alabama ends up deflecting it. But Aaron Burbridge working away from his defender. That time, Connor Cook just not able to find the open receiver. And Allen, the all defensive SEC player with a couple of sacks and pass broken up. And the Spartans go three and out for the third time. The puff is muffed by Jones, who had the pick at the end of the half. And now he's holding his leg as he rolls out of bounds, hops up. Tied up 17 here at the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. 
The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, brought to you by Honda. AT&T, mobilizing your world. Taco Bell's Crunch Wrap Sliders, four full-size flavors, just a buck each. And Sherwin-Williams, make the most of your color with the very best paint. Ask Sherwin-Williams. A spectacular billion-dollar palace. Good view from the Goodyear blimp. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Ty drove 75 yards to the end zone to pad the lead the last possession. Coker and company back to work from the 27, and you wonder if you begin to see a more typical second half steady diet of the Heisman Trophy winner right now. That's what I that's what I said. You know, I, I think now you'll see Derrick Henry. Let's let's mark this. He's at 39 yards with 834 remaining in the third quarter. I think they'll still be aggressive with Coker, but I think you're going to see a lot more of Henry trying to wear down Michigan State. Running left. The wall of blockers. Hurdles the man, dives across the 40 before Cox could stop him. That's Henry's best run of the ball game. Watch the left tackle here, Cam Robinson. Just follow him. Look how he gets outside as a big man. He's taking the Michigan State linebacker, Darian Harris, for a ride. And we've seen Robinson get out in front on pass plays. Ryan Kelly with a nice block. But a great job by Cam Robinson. He was 15, 20 yards downfield pushing the veteran Darian Harris. A rare dude who can start as a true freshman in the SEC at left tackle, huh? He's a sophomore this year. Henry, that time a short gain. It's not like the Alabama offensive line has ha had their way at all with this defensive no, front. No, not up to this point. No, not at all. I mean, it's running the ball obviously has been tough. I mean, only 54 yards rushing as a team. It's it's been holding up against Coker, who has really found a great rhythm. He's been sacked just once, but he's gotten it out quickly. Yeah, that's he? the thing. Lane Kiffin's put him in a, in a position to have success. It's time they move the pocket. Coker wanted a downfield shot. Escapes the tackle of Bulla, but dropped for a short loss. Talked about the Alabama offensive line. They won the Joe Moore Award, the inaugural award named for the great offensive line coach as a group they're very proud of that the trophy weighs about 350 pounds so only a lineman can can nudge it and three new starters there at the left guard the right guard and the right tackle and th this offense had to completely retool itself you lose Blake Sims you lose TJ Yeldon you lose Amari Cooper three new offensive linemen Spartans need to get off the field here Ty need 11 on third down Red protection. Coker delivers a strike again. It's Mullaney who came here from Oregon State, picked up this pro sale offense very quickly and has been a big contributor tonight. How about Coker here? Just sits in that pocket, does a good job here of giving Mullaney a chance, who just back to the football, knows exactly where he needs to go. But that ball was thrown right between the safe, the two safeties that time. Henry. Flag comes down as Henry muscles for about 13 before he's driven out. Marker was very early in the play. And it's Alphonse Taylor, the guard. They've been a chop block? Yeah, it looks like it. Personal foul. Chop block. Offense. Number 76 and number 50. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Taylor and Jackson on the on the right side. See him right here. Combination. One guy goes high, one guy goes low. And that's a rule that's put in to protect the defensive linemen and their knees. That's a crucial penalty because the tide were rolling. That would have been a first down near the 35 of Michigan State. All the momentum and said the ball's back up to the 35 of Alabama. Cost of about 30 yards. 15 of the last 16 for Coker, who is seizing the big stage tonight. And first and 25. Spins free. Shows the strength. Fires it to the bench. There was no one in the facility. Uh, and it didn't get crossed to line of scrimmage. Yeah. He was outside of the tackle box, but that ball was two or three yards short of the line of scrimmage. 
Here comes the highlight. They're, they're going to talk. Flag. Yeah, they're talking, and eventually he'll pull the flag out. Maybe not. There is no foul on the play for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside the pocket. The ball got past the line of scrimmage. Second down. Okay. I, I, I thought it looked like it was a yard or two short. D'Antonio agrees. Darian Harris was pressuring the quarterback, and, and Coker shows his his escapability. He says, "I was never called unathletic until I got here," and he, he really kind of chafes at the label. And the, the line of scrimmage there was the 35 and a half, and it went out of bounds at about the 33. So they missed that one. Still second and 25. Hooker chased again, flips it to Henry on a screen who could not keep his balance and steps out of bounds for a loss, and the tide are going the wrong way. And go back to that last play. As I said, the ball's at about the 35 and a half. The ball, there's the 30. The ball goes out of bounds at about the 33, 34 yard line. I don't know. I mean, the line judge is standing at the line of scrimmage. Good either, and the ball went to sure. his left. <laughs> The ball went to his left. He's right at the line of scrimmage. Nevertheless, it is third and 31. See if they check it deep or just call a safe play. Yeah. Feed Mr. Henry. It gets up ahead of steam. It'll be dropped down at the 42, and Alabama will have to punt. Riley Bulla. They haven't called his name much, didn't make the tackle that time. Yeah, mistakes that time cost Alabama. Ba Alabama, remember what Tom Rinaldi said? Finish, finish, finish. We've heard it all week. We've heard all the bowl preparation from Nick Saban. They were up 21-6 against Ohio State. They've been talking about being aggressive. There was an opportunity to go for a knockout punch, possibly to go up by 20 or 24, and instead the miscues cost him, and Michigan State still has hope and still alive here. Not finishing against the Buckeyes, who outlasted, outplayed the Tide a year ago in the semifinals in New Orleans. That really shaped the motivation, the hunger for the Tide this season. We'll see how they handle the lead here. You're right, missed opportunity to add to it. Scott makes a punt up into the jet stream. Kings from the five. Knocked down at the 15. So a long way to go for Connor Cook. Down 17, late third quarter. ET&T strongest of the strong. Taking a look at the senior class of the Spartans who have achieved a lot. A couple of Big Ten titles, a 43 and 10 record. The 25th year seniors signed right after Michigan State was hammered by Alabama the only previous series meeting in the Capital One Bowl a lot of work for the veteran leadership Connor Cook included to try to get back in this game but they can draw on the fact that they've been down and battled back before 10 of 19 for Cook and that one crucial interception just before halftime when the Spartans were threatening. Lying before the snap. Ball start. Offense. Number 76. Five yard penalty. First down. It's one of those seniors, Clark. But every time you get a flag and you back up five yards against this Alabama defense, the, the hill just seems a little steeper, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and part of the reason, Chris, this has been so tough tonight is not only is Alabama so strong up front and they're rotating bodies, they've been able to play almost every snap with two safeties deep. And by playing with these two safeties back here deep, it takes away the deep threat out here, and it forces Connor Cook to find opportunities here, here, and here, which is tough to do when they throw the football and you have two guys deep and you still have five underneath in coverage. You know, first and 15, they feed it to Scott. There just hasn't been any running room for any of the four Spartan backs tonight. Usually the answer for, for coaches when they have safeties that are staying deep, when you especially have two safeties that are deep, they're going to run the football all day on you. They're going to force you, force Kirby Smart, to bring one of those safeties down because without that extra safety down, you, you're going to be able to run the ball. When you bring that safety down, then you get some one-on-one -on -one opportunities. But Alabama's been able to keep, for most of the snaps, two safeties high and still stop the run where Michigan State has negative two yards rushing. 
Cook takes a downfield shot. Kings could not make the catch. Vince Patrick defending him. And if the Tide can protect this lead, it looks like Kirby Smart may prolong his stay with the Tide and, and not take over full time as the Georgia head coach. But Garrett Kings would love to have an opportunity to be able to hold on to that ball. The senior who has had a, a career where he's had chances to make plays. It's been at times he makes big plays. Other times he's had a problem with drops. That time that ball gets through and pretty good coverage there by Minka Fitzpatrick, the true freshman out of New Jersey. That's about the third drop. You've got to make those plays against a defense this good. And now they've got to get 12 to stay on the field here. Cook pressured. Fires it away incomplete to avoid the sack. Tim Williams, the speedy edge pass rush specialist, that time got in the quarterback's face. And here comes the intentional grounding flying late. Yeah, he just threw that football. There was nobody there. He's not outside of the tackle box. Offense, number 18. The quarterback was in the pocket. There was no eligible receiver in the area. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. Fourth down. How about Tim Williams? Four sacks in the last two games. Just incredible technique with his spin move there. They work so hard on that. He has the left hand that just pulls that offensive tackle and pushes him through. Gets home to the quarterback. Remember, they're rushing four. Four guys. They've got five underneath to take away the underneath throws, and they've got two deep. What are you going to do? Mark Barger backed up to his end line here. Gets it away quickly. Jones is driven back. It's a nice punt, but he's got room. Cyrus Jones with a crease to the sideline. Still running. Touchdown, Alabama. Seven yards in the tide can smell that title game. Non offensive touchdowns have been a big part of this team's success this season. Nine of them now, Kirk. And the slash, slash, intentional grounding that, T, that Tim Williams forced put Cyrus Jones in a, in a position to have a chance at a big return by pushing Michigan State deep into their own territory. And Cyrus Jones driven back. Grabs the kick beyond the Spartan coverage, and the fourth time this season, number five has taken one to the house. 24 0. Alabama in the deficit growing bigger for Cook. A pick, and now a punt return. What a night from number five. After the game, stay tuned for Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. Complete wrap up on both. Semifinal games and a peek ahead of the championship game in Glendale a week from Monday. Alabama tightening its grip on this semifinal in Arlington as Cyrus Jones with something special. This is Shelton trying to answer. Knocked down across the 25. The whole repertoire of Mr. Jones on display here. Well, it, it, the ball did not hang up in the air very long on the punt, but look at this move right here. <laughs> <laughs> And the poor punter. Whoop. Poor punter. He just kind of set him up. He just olayed him. And then he's feeling pretty good into the end zone. And Nick Saban pretty excited about that. Let's go one one. He again he's he's thinking about that, that's Nick excited. That's excited. He's thinking one. We're going for one. Well, Jones made that, as you, you, you called it, the perfect technique interception at the end of the half to kill the Spartans drive. And now, a bump return to make it 24 0. Will it be pure? Hurry up now from the Spartans. Urgency here. This is Burbridge, but just nowhere to run after the catch. Crowd of crimson jerseys knock him down for a one yard gain. Go look at this entire night for the Michigan State offense. Look at this. Look, look at the far right. Mm. I mean, are you kidding me? Only one drive longer than 33 yards. That, of course, was the drive that ended in the pick at the end of the half. Cook rolling out, batted in the air, 
almost intercepted. Sean Dion Hamilton, the linebacker, is the guy who got a hand on it, and then it was a. They were lucky not to have that picked off. Yeah, he, he puts his throws back into the coverage. Hamilton gets the hand. How about the effort there by Big De Denzel Duvall also goes up, almost come down with the interception. Third and nine pressure. Cook gets it away. Burbridge could not make the catch. They brought heat that time. But again, a, a catchable ball for a Michigan State receiver. Uh, still a tough catch. I mean, it's still a tight window. You had a linebacker, Foster, getting back there. You could see that internal clock. I mean, it, Connor Cook knows he's got to get the football out. You can see, yeah, Foster 10 got back yeah. there and got a hand on the ball to knock that away. But Jones waiting for another one. SEC is the chant from the Alabama faithful on the far side. And Jones, another chance, this time to the left side. Gave that little high step move again and got across midfield. He likes that Walter Payton little, <laughs> little like hesitation move. You know, he lifts that leg up. He's feeling it. You're right tonight, though. <laughs> the All State bus. Curtis Wilson piloting it around the country. Happy to have him here in Arlington. Curtis will be heading out to Glendale, Arizona. 83 schools, 26 bowl games, millions donated in scholarship money by all state across the country. So Bama at midfield. And they begin to feed Henry now. No. Nope. Lane Kiffin still wants a play action shot. Down the field. Ridley running free. Got a touchdown. <laughs> Second 50 yard connection between Coker and Ridley tonight. And it's the exact same way that they attacked them earlier. It's the way other teams have tried to attack Michigan State. When you get a receiver matched up in the inside against a safety who's eight to ten yards off the line of scrimmage, Calvin Ridley is full speed by the time Demetrius Cox has a chance to try to defend him. It's really, really tough without being rerouted with that slot receiver. Lane Kiffin deserves a ton of credit for finding ways to get Ridley matched up against the safety. He's right here, he's gonna, he's gonna actually right here. And look at the man who's gonna try to cover him. Look at the distance that you have right there. And a little bit of play action, which gets the linebackers up, and now it's just one-on-one -on -one right here. He gets exactly what he wants, steps up into the pocket to buy time, and then throws it away from the defender. But it's Calvin Ridley against Demetrius Cox for the second time in a row. Sets him up to the outside, back to the inside. The ball is thrown way to the inside to give the true freshman a chance to run away from Cox, just like Lane Kiffin envisioned it in these three weeks of preparation. If you ask him, how do you attack Michigan State? You attack the slot receiver against the safety in man-to-man -man coverage. It's happened a lot this year to the secondary. Kiffin going for the kill shot and the smile from Kirby Smart, perhaps, and Jake Coker in the biggest game of his life, the game he's waited his whole life to play, his best game. Career highs in completions and yards, 24 of 29, 280 yards, and the two touchdown passes. And I think that Michigan State felt that in the quarterback matchup, Cook far more experienced, he's been steadier. They had to win that head-to-head -head matchup, perhaps by a big margin. It's yeah. gone the other way tonight. He sure has. He has one of the best games of the year for Jake Coker. But let's give Lane Kiffin kind of a lightning rod. Give him a lot of credit for the game plan and what he's put together tonight. So much about Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry. But tonight, it's about a quick passing game and taking some chances downfield when it was right. And again, Lane Kiffin gets criticized. People need to start embracing him for the offensive mind that he can be. You know, they feed Scott down 31 now. Final couple minutes 
of the third quarter. It's been a Lane Kiffin kind of night. He has been criticized. There was even some internal criticism because he wasn't playing to the strength of the offense, which was the best player, Derrick Henry. Tonight they began from the start, Kirk, to use him as a decoy, yep. and they gave what the defense. I, I think early in the year, Chris, he, he tried to take the blueprint from 2014, the success of Blake Sims and Amari Cooper, where they were spread and tempo, and they tried to figure out who, if they could run that this year with this offense. And when they lost to Ole Miss, they scrapped it and went back to finding a way to just, we're going to run the football with Derrick Henry and play action pass. Shelton, short gain near the marker at the 35, and they will move the chains. And by the way, they have grown not just with Jay Coker and his confidence. You know about Derrick Henry. The offensive line is a lot better than where they were early in the year. And how about Calvin Ridley and our Darius Stewart, the receivers that lead that group of rec uh, wide receivers? They also now are a great complement to Derrick Henry in that running game. The Julio Jones passing the baton to Amari Cooper, part of that championship team. And now to Calvin Ridley. Tied about a streak of premium wide receivers. This is. The Spartans wide receiver Burbridge in it Wildcat with Scott next to him. He keeps it. Shows the speed on the edge is stiff arm driven out. First down across the 45. With a few successful running plays for the Spartans tonight. Yeah, it's been, been a rough night for that offensive line of Michigan State. A veteran group that, that really prided themselves and they were pretty public about their confidence and what they felt that they could do. They felt that Alabama's defensive line had never seen an offensive line like Michigan State's. Mm. I don't know if that's the, the right thing to say publicly about the to the Alabama defense. To yeah, I wouldn't soak them up. If I were no, I would, I would not either. An 11 yard run was the longest of the night. It gets them into plus territory. They now before that play had a net two yards rushing. A couple more there. Chris, you brought it up earlier about how the defensive line from Alabama is not just talented, but they kind of are the pulse of this, this team. And when you have a team that self-polices itself at practice and, and away from the, the practice facility, they kind of keep their eyes on players. Players fear them because of the consequences. They are a, that's a brotherhood on that defensive line. Almost an interception on the far side in the final play. Of the third quarter, Marlon Humphrey broke it up and intended for Kings. Alabama 31 zip at the end of three in Arlington, back after these messages at the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. And welcome back to the college football playoff semifinal number two at the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Beginning of you know, the final quarter, all Alabama, Michigan State threatened. At the end of the half, but Cyrus Jones picking off Connor Cook just short of the goal line. Alabama took the second half kickoff. 75 yards for a touchdown. The Spartans self destructing with a couple of major penalties in that drive, and then the momentum really began to build. Cyrus Jones, a punt return for a touchdown. And Ridley on a deep ball from Coker. On third and eight, shovel pass to Price inside. The tight end has some room. A first down and a lot more inside the 35. Yeah, really good execution here by Cook, who draws a defender to him. Jonathan Allen, the defensive end, also gets Harrison 15 up to him. And because Harrison on a blitz did not recognize the tight end coming underneath, he was able to flip it to him, and he just had a ton of room to run there. One of the better executed run play, or actually it's a little flip, little shovel pass plays we've seen tonight. Cook, it's a four-man rush, delivers behind Price and incomplete. That previous play was one of the few blitzes we've seen from Bama. They have not needed to blitz at all tonight. Controlling things with their depth on that defensive line, rotating bodies to stay fresh, and whether Michigan State's running or they're in pass protection, it's just been uh, domination up front. Five receivers for Cook to work with. Again, over the middle, it's Burbridge, a catch for a short gain. 
Go ahead, Chris. I talked about Kirby Smart. He was introduced as Georgia's head coach officially the day after Alabama won the SEC championship. He's a former defensive back at Georgia. One of the busiest guys in America, other than you, maybe in the last month, you know, splitting duties between getting this game plan ready. And Nick does demand a little time from his assistants, doesn't he? A little bit. And then yeah. he's trying to find a staff. He's got about <laughs> five more guys to hire at Georgia working recruits late at night. It's and remember about the dogs now, but he could have left, <laughs> but he wanted to stay yeah. not just to be there with his coaching staff, but really it's about the players and finishing trying to finish this year off. Scott on third and five gets nothing and it'll be fourth down. Talked about the Saban coaching tree. D'Antonio, of course, worked with him about 15 years ago at Michigan State. Jimbo Fisher was with him at LSU. And then you got three guys in the SEC East. Muschamp, McElwain, of course, and Smart. That play is knocked down on fourth down by Reggie Ragland. And the Tide will take over. And Kirby Smart over there jumping around with his linebacker, one of the leaders. Chris, this, this is what's going to be great to see when Clemson plays Alabama. It, it's the test, the athletic ability of the linebackers. Reggie Ragland moves to defensive end from time to time. And that time he did. How about the athletic ability on a big fourth down to go up and knock that football away? And none of Nick Saban's former assistants have come close to beating him. Look at the Nick with a grin there. 8-0 against him. And Jim McElwain, it was a 14-point margin. The SEC championship game, that's actually the closest margin. Antonio looks like he's going to drop to 0-2 against Saban. I ask him, you know, why, they, why you think that is? Because Nick really doesn't enjoy coaching against guys that work for him, that he's close to. And he said, no. well, because he's got really good teams, the obvious answer. Not because he tries harder, not because the guys who work for him are intimidated by coaching against him. Bama's just really good. And they are again tonight. Henry knocked down for a loss. Derek has not been the story for once. With that loss, it's going to and drop his total back to about about 63 yards yeah, tonight. He, he, he's a tough guy to compete against. I mean, he's, he's built a dynasty in Tuscaloosa. He's got the resources. He, he's got a machine, you know, what he's able to do. He loses great assistant coaches. He's able to bring in great assistant coaches. It'll be a tough hit uh, losing Kirby Smart to Georgia, uh, but he will restructure and, and get this this staff ready and just continues to go. It's but it's it's tough. It's tough to compete against him no matter who you are, let alone his one of your his former assistants. Well, Jeremy Pruitt will take over as defensive coordinator as Ridley takes this little pop pass and Ridley trying to add to his big evening driven down after about an eight yard gain. It'll be third down. Pruitt has been hanging around here, not allowed to yet coach, but he's been at the practices. An Alabama graduate who comes back home yep. to that position. Just a couple years ago, coaching as a defensive coordinator for Florida State in yep. a national championship season. There he is standing up there in the background. And Alabama has perhaps set a world record, at least a college football record, with the number of guys they have in their coaching box. Often it's a a dozen or more. They got a whole bunch of consultants and quality control. Look at that. It's a good thing the coaching boxes are huge in the <laughs> stadium. Thing we're in an NFL stadium here. Coker diving still headlong, trying to move the chains on third down. Comes up a couple yards short. He's still he's still doing what he does. He's well, yeah. still selling out. Remember, remember the, the, the mantra: finish, finish. I mean, it's 31 to nothing, and they, they don't even see the scoreboard. They don't even have any idea what the score is. They're trying to execute as if the game is tied right now. They've executed in just about every facet pretty well, including Scott, who's gotten off some nice punts tonight. They have won the special teams battle, an area that I think the Spartans felt they needed to look for every edge tonight. Another department in which Alabama has dominated. And that's another deep deep punt from the sophomore Kings driven back inside his 15 and the coverage for Alabama that time swarming down there and drops him right there 10 53 to play Bama rolling toward Arizona the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic brought to you by Goodyear follow at Goodyear on Twitter for big daily prizes hashtag Goodyear Northwestern Mutual we help you live life differently. The Lincoln Wish List event. Visit your Lincoln showroom today. And DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. 
With this game, the, there was a blimp decal on one of the windows of this place. The real blimp was overhead. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires, but they roll into yours. Goodyear more driven. There it is. This place where Alabama had hoped to reach a year ago, stumbling at the semifinal hurdle against Ohio State in the Superdome. This is where they began this season, wearing down a Big Ten team in Wisconsin, even more impressive tonight. They really have grown as the season's gone on. Chasing Cook again, runs out across the 15 after a short gain. We wondered, Kirk, at that time, what would the offensive identity of this team be? Who would the quarterback be? Could it be Coker, perhaps Cooper Bateman? And you know, here we are, 14 games later, and we, we see a fully formed Alabama team. Yeah, yeah, from that loss, they became a different team, and Derrick Henry started to get his, his opportunities. And I think Jake Coker just, just started to play with a little bit more of an edge. I think with the more success he had, you can see him smiling there. I think he became more confident. Remember, he's been through a lot throughout his career starting in Tallahassee as a backup to Jameis Winston. Cook dumps it off incomplete out of the hands of Price. Coker, a guy, Kirk, like so many quarterbacks who are perfectionists, really was unable to do what Cook has been able to do in his career, which is shake off a bad play and a mistake. And at, at times, I think you'd agree, he, he didn't play very forceful because he was so afraid of making that mistake. Yeah, whether it was Florida State when he was trying to compete with Jameis Winston to replace E.J. Manuel, I think he put a lot on himself and tried to execute and if things didn't go well I think he he struggled with with making a mistake I think that carried over into his competition with Blake Sims a year ago and maybe even this year early against Cooper Bateman and then after being benched he kind of got just upset sure did responded very well to that bench he played well as the tide came close to coming back against Ole Miss and from that point on showed his toughness and it hasn't always been pretty. Let's be honest. Sometimes the past game execution has been pretty painful. But tonight, a night he'll never forget. No, no. And, and like I said, imagine the year that he had after everything that he's been through, get, transferring over from Florida State, everybody assuming he would beat Blake Sims out, not beating out Blake Sims, coming in this year, getting benched, and to be able to finish off this year the way he did, winning an SEC championship game, getting voted by his teammates as a captain, and then getting a chance in a playoff and playing the way he has tonight, 25 of 30 for 287. Jones, fair catch. Spartans and trying to work their way back into the game. Five possessions after halftime, four, three and outs. She's happy he's not. <laughs> Sage Steel here in Times Square for Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest. My favorite act of the night coming up in just a couple minutes. Carrie Underwood, exactly 11.39 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on ABC. Enjoy the rest of the game. Sage, thank you. About 43 minutes left. 42.07 exactly as we count down in Times Square. Nine and a half left here in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. This will not be the most exciting New Year's Eve of your life, I'm, I'm going to guess. No, I'll be in the air. Heading out to Pasadena. we got a three-hour game day tomorrow morning. you got to be ready to go. I know you'll be ready. Oh, yeah. That wasn't what I was going for. As Drake gets the edge and shows the speed into Spartan territory. Cuts back. Still running. Kenyon Drake dragged down at the 10 by Calhoun. You said he'd have a monster play tonight. He came in the fourth quarter. But he has such speed, and he's able to get to the outside. Calvin Ridley comes up with a block, a crack block. There's nobody left to the outside because the corner, Edmondson, followed Ridley to the inside. So Ridley essentially takes two defenders away, and then it's just Kenyon Drake and that tremendous speed that he has in the open field. So not Henry, but Drake, the first really big running play of the night, 58 yards. And the Tide trying to deliver an even bigger beat down here. Drake knocked down for a short gain. Talk about finish, finish, finish. How about the veteran, the senior, the center, Ryan Kelly? See if we can pick him up here. There's Drake. He gets to the edge because of the block by Ridley. But Ryan Kelly is downfield 60. Look at him. He's 60 yards downfield. Coach said finish. And he's trying to set an example here as a veteran. 
all the way down to about the 10 yard line still running down there. Well, he is the glue to that offensive line and with some of the issues they had at quarterback early in the year, two new offensive guards on the left and right. He keeps it together. Henry cuts it back, tries to bounce it, gets past Calhoun, headed for the end zone. Another touchdown for the tie. The second for the Heisman winner tonight. Well, here's that stiff arm. Look at him push away Calhoun. That is a big man at 255, 260 pounds. He just throws him to the side right there with that, that stiff arm that's becoming legendary. And then the speed to get to that corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Highline right, Cam showing you the dive. So Henry up to 75 yards rushing. Only 3.8 per carry in those two touchdowns. They don't quit these guys, do they? Nope. Midway fourth. And Griffith to make it 38 nothing. Not the busiest or the biggest night for sure for his season. Other guys have shared the spotlight, but Henry with a powerful move, which is pay dirt for the second time. Cranking Leonard Skinner's sweet home Alabama and the tide against an Alabama alum. Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers a collision course since the second edition of the playoff committee rankings came out back on November 10th. Tigers and the tide have been one two. Just maybe the committee yeah. had it right again. Yeah absolutely. Gotta give him credit. You sure do. As we begin to talk about the championship matchup a week from Monday, a reminder that tomorrow on ESPN, Battle Frog Fiesta Bowl gets things going at 1 o'clock Eastern. Fighting Irish against the Buckeyes. Who's going to be more motivated in that game? The beauty of the Rose Bowl. Christian McCaffrey and Stanford against the tough Iowa Hawkeyes and then Oklahoma State and Ole Miss in the All-State Sugar Bowl in prime time. Don't forget the championship drive tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Over at the Rose Bowl will lead right up to uh, the Fiesta Bowl, the Ohio State Notre Dame. You got any gas in the tank left for that, oh. my man? You gonna go get out there in Pasadena? Are you, are you kidding me? We'll be we'll be courtside right there on the field in the corner. Perhaps Connor Cook's night and career are finished. It's Damian Terry, the sophomore. No, well, Cook's actually still in the game, but with Terry, he's playing quarterback, and he's going to take off. And the talented runner who took turns with Tyler O'Connor in the win at Ohio State and makes the first down. Yeah he had uh, carries the football has, does a really good job with his athletic ability gives this Alabama defense a little bit of a of a different look picks up some yards and Cook is still in there they just brought Terry in and, and yep. tried to it works. trick the tide picked up some yards. You don't think Alabama's defense with many of the starters still out there intent on protecting the shutout. <laughs> <laughs> it's a throwback to Price and it gets a block on the edge muscles for about five and gets knocked down and a flag comes out for a late hit on the tide. But a late hit looked like it came from an Alabama player on the sideline. Looked like Tim Williams actually made the hit. He's not even on the field. Ryan Anderson chased him out of bounds 22 after the play personal foul late hit defense number 22 15 yard penalty from the dead ball spot automatic first down watch Ryan Ryan Anderson pushes him out of bounds but he pushes him right into Tim Williams he gives him a little shove here but guess who he shoves him into he brings that forearm up into the face of the tight end penalty moves it to the 42 of Alabama and for pride certainly the Spartans would love to get on the board here cook flips it short and one that's knocked out of bounds at their first down 
You recall the 21 nothing shutout of LSU the payback game the BCS championship game in the Superdome. That's the last shutout in Alabama's bowl history. Well that that is the motivation right now. We saw them practice with such intensity. Clearly Nick Saban knows what he's doing but you did wonder did they leave a lot on the practice field would they yeah. have that edge that energy needed for the game after practicing so hard hitting so much and Kirk you know spending so much emotional energy the guys we talked a lot about tonight Allen and Robinson and Reed you know very animated in practice you know Tony Brown a backup defensive back was was sent home from this bowl trip for undisclosed reasons but I think the leadership council those guys had a lot to do with it they oh, just yeah. didn't like his attitude but that, that's what's different about this team than the last couple years they, they've got a core group of players that probably because of some past experience failures losing to Oklahoma in a sugar bowl losing to Ohio State last year in a playoff they experienced that and they that has really those those defeats have it's driven this team as a group to be different this year London Cannot escape is knocked down. It's going to be third down. See, I, I think that's that's what's different. You know, you watch Alabama, you see their front, you see all the talent, you see all these recruits that they bring in. But you go back and look at the championships that Nick Saban's won, and there's there's been a leader. There's been two or three guys on defense, and Reggie Ragland's one of those guys. There's been two or three guys on offense. The intangibles of this team are every bit as strong as the actual physical aspect of the XOs of this team. And when you have both, you have a special a special group. And Saban has a special feel about this team for the reasons you just said. He really wants to win a championship for their sake. Really not to add to his total. And, and you can believe him when he says that. I mean, obviously, you know, getting to number five, truly special within one of the total that Paul Bryan had at Alabama. And three of Bryan's national championships were shared titles and the, the two wire poles were split three were outright this potentially if he can beat Clemson a fifth for Saban and instead of Michigan State trying to kick a field goal to avoid the shutout they're trying to go for it here on fourth down and the Tide fans who are all still here are up and making noise they fake it to London Cook so has it throws back and incomplete trying to get it to Kevin Pendleton but Bradley Silve was right there in the time will take over again 429 from the finish line yeah they tried to sneak the fullback out on a wheel route just kind of slid him out of the backfield but yet again the discipline discipline Bradley Silve the senior right where he needs to be playing great coverage and Alabama holds on to that shutout. So Alabama takes over their opponent a week from Monday in Glendale Clemson they met 15 times Alabama has won the last 12 of course Tabo Sweeney was a receiver for the Crimson Tide part of that 92 mm -hmm. national championship team under coach Gene Stallings is very important to him other connections between the schools of course Danny Ford who won Clemson's only previous championship an Alabama grad as we see the talented true freshman Bo Scarborough has had a knee injury much of the season but a monster future he figures to take over the Derrick Henry role next year. Well, he'll definitely be in the rotation and be in the mix along with the true freshman Damian Harris. But Jake Coker's night is over and Cooper Bateman now in and it's nice to see a big smile from Jake Coker. You know he's he's been under such stress and, and uh, just dealing with being the quarterback at Bama he goes 25 of 30 in a playoff game for 287 yards and, and more importantly in command without making any mistakes. Congratulations from Derrick Henry he's to his like, quarterback. Like, you, you were the man no, tonight. For real. He's like, for real. You were the man. Yeah, you play it tonight. <laughs> Scarborough he wants to make the most of his opportunities and he's a load too. And look at the Alabama look, look, look bench. Look at the top there. Look, look at Look at Cam Robinson and event. Look at him. Look at him. That's what you love to see is instead of the starters drinking water and talking to each other. Look at Jaron Reed there. Uh, that this, this is a great example of what's different about Alabama. The starters are just as excited for the backups because they're out there competing. Look at them. They're all up near the sideline cheering on these backups that are in the game right now. That's the mark of a great team. 
Romano finish. By the way, don't think that they think they're finished tonight. There'll be no big celebration. Reaching the championship game, never the goal for Alabama. Being the last team standing is really the only thing they play for. And now it's another true freshman, Damian Harris, who's a talented back, getting his turn. We saw Clemson play tremendous defense in the second half. They really wore down the Sooners. Shaq Lawson, one of their defensive leaders for the Tigers, went out very early. He, by the way, has said he expects to oh, play. Great. He's got great a knee news. injury. We saw him on the sidelines with the ice. He didn't come back in after going out, but he says at least hopefully that yeah, he's let, going to be ready to play a week from Monday. You, you brought up Dabo Sweeney, and how, how exciting would it be to see Dabo Sweeney, not just against Alabama, but Deshaun Watson's playmaking ability, the ability to throw the ball to those wide receivers, the way he can run and create. He's the poster boy as far as quarterbacks that give Alabama trouble. And we're going to get to see that matchup against that Alabama defense. Scarbo hit for a lot. No doubt the Capital One pivotal performance goes to tonight. Jake Coker. So Ridley, this was the 50-yard play that set up the one-yard run. This was the one they gave to Ridley on the review. The tremendous hand strength in that catch. And then the true freshman running free, winning the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Almost a flawless night for number 14. It really was. Sure was. Playing with confidence, playing his best football at the right time, going into that championship game. Exactly, and you wonder how this will carry forward because this has not been the cooker we've seen all that often this year, let's be honest. And now Kiffin perhaps will really believe that he can count on this quarterback. Bateman, meanwhile, trying to make his mark, delivers a low throw. You know Henry's a given. If Coker can play like this, you've got Ridley out there, offensive line doing its job, and we know about yeah. the defense. Yeah. Tough to handle. There'll be a seven-point yeah. favorite. Over Clemson, yep. the Bear, Chris Felica, informing us of that already early has, line. He already has that information. Yeah. I, I just I can't say enough about Lane Kiffin, Chris. I mean, he he is a uh, a coach that that has had you know when he was hired by Nick Saban a couple years ago, even the Alabama fans, their ears kind of perked up like Lane Kiff Lane Kiffin's going to work for for Nick Saban, and think about his demeanor watching him at practice. You don't even know he's on the practice field. It's almost like Tom Landry as far as his approach and how quiet he deals with his quarterback. I've never heard that skill. comparison made. Lane Kiffin. And no, no, no. I'm, I'm saying his his demeanor. No, I know what you mean. And the way he talks. I'm not yeah. saying you know. I'm not saying his <laughs> annex and some of the things he does, but I'm just saying the way he talks. Like he's. It's like he's whispering to his quarterbacks throughout practice. You're and exactly they, re right. they seem to respond to that too. The Ford GT post game will wrap up this route. By Alabama. And look ahead. We'll have the trophy presentation as well. And begin to digest very compelling matchup in Glendale, Arizona. Clemson will arrive undefeated. Alabama will arrive with an 11 game winning streak since that loss at home to Ole Miss. A lot of good memories in this season for the Spartans as well. As Connor Cook just flips it off short, incomplete. This is a season that will be remembered for a long time in East Lansing. The stirring comeback against Michigan and then Ohio State. The rally against Iowa, that 22 play touchdown drive in the closing seconds. They reached what they call their goal, which is the Big Ten Championship, and is usually going to be good enough to get into the Final Four, but we're overmatched tonight physically. No doubt. No doubt about it. Just 215 total yards for the Spartans. Cook fires. And Burbridge, who really wasn't able to make a big play, loses the ball but went out of bound first. Cook, 34 games won in his career, and lose for just the fifth time. He's had great success against good teams like Alabama. Wasn't helped by any kind of running game tonight. Constantly pressured. It did make the mistake just before halftime. It was crucial. One of the top quarterback prospects, all the analysts say, for the draft. 
Kirk Cousins, yeah. of course, his predecessor, having a nice time with the Redskins. Yeah. Brian Hoyer is still out playing and contributing, obviously doing a great job starting in the NFL. Michigan State, you start to look at some of the quarterbacks they've had come through East Lansing. It is pretty remarkable what they've done. And Connor Cook, you would think, will be the next one in line to get his opportunity, too. Michigan State will have to replace 20 fifth year seniors, the nucleus of this team, the leaders, and three other seniors also moving on. So Antonio will have a lot of pieces to replace going forward. Cook working over the middle and the catch is made by DeAnthony Arnett now to the 45. The tough thing for Mark D'Antonio is he has brought this program so far in these last four or five years. You just wonder if a loss like this on this biggest stage what that does to the brand of Michigan State. I, I would look at them and you could argue that they have as many wins as almost anybody in the country in the last three or four years. You know, five 11 win seasons in the last six as Cook flips it down. The down the Leaping interception made by Dylan Lee, who's mobbed by his teammates, the senior, with his first pick of the season. Wow, what a catch. How about him going up into the air, making the play, and then getting his foot down. Look at Kirby Smart's trying to make a play on the ball. He's over here. Nick's right there. Oh, he makes the catch, gets his knee down for the interception. That's a, that's a linebacker. Yeah. Two-handed grab does get the knee and the elbow down as... Cook is picked up for the second time. You see his eyes watching that ball. It's we're going the other way. And that secures the shutout. Almost a smile. Almost a smile from Nick there. A lot of smiles from, from Lee and his teammates. And with one more game to go, it'll be an interesting challenge for Tom Rinaldi to see if he can get a, a, a smirk. Because mm. you mm. still have one more ball game to go. And I'm not counting on that. It's Bateman out for victory formation. Total team win for the Tide. Defense set the tone, blanking the Spartans. Alabama bullying the Big Ten champions and booking a spot in the national championship game opposite Clemson in Glendale a week from Monday. Emphatic and dominant. Let's get Saban's reaction with Tom Rinaldi. Tom? Chris, thank you very much. You reached this stage a year ago and didn't get the result you wanted. Why was it different tonight? Well, I think the players learned a lot from last year's game, and, you know, they, they looked at it like they just wanted to participate in the game. I think today they wanted to do something a little bit different and, you know, sort of kind of try to take over the game, and I think we did that in the second half. So much attention focused on Derrick Henry during the weeks leading to this game. What did you learn about your quarterback tonight? Well, I, I think the way they play and the way that they played us, that it was going to be difficult to run the ball. So we knew Jake was going to have to throw it and do a good job of it. And he did a fantastic job of making some big plays. And, you know, our receivers did a great job of getting downfield on their safeties. A shutout speaks for itself, but I'll ask you to speak for your defense. How would you describe their performance? Well, they played well. You know, two minutes before the half, we wasn't great on, but uh, we intercepted the ball down there. But, you know, we did a good job today. I think the rush, you know, affected the quarterback some, and we did a pretty good job of covering him for the most part. You now face number one Clemson. Dabo Sweeney's fond of saying, bring your own guts. What will the Tide bring to the national championship game? Well, you know, we'd like to enjoy this game for 24 hours, but, you know, Clemson's got a great team. They're undefeated. They've uh, got a great program, so, uh, you know, I'm sure our guys are going to be motivated to, you know, try to do the best they can to play the best they can in the game, and it's a great opportunity for them, and I'm just proud as hell of them for getting to where they are and doing what they did all year long since the Ole Miss game. What are the chances we'll see a smile right now? Well, we got another game. I told you. I told next week. you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Let's go to Heather. <laughs> I, know. I don't know how to follow that, Tom. We are definitely going to smile over here with Jake Coker, the winning quarterback. And Jake, you grew up dreaming about being quarterback for this team, but you had quite a detour to get here. Went to Florida State, then came here and, and had to sit behind Blake. What does it mean to you to be the quarterback of this team, knowing just how long and how hard it was to get to this point? Uh, it means a lot to me to, to play quarterback in Alabama. Like you said, I, I pulled for him all my life. and. Uh, the thing that makes it even more special is this, the group of guys that just came together and, and 
everybody plays for each other, you know. And there, there's one guy that's not happy about how we play today, or you know, not happy they didn't get the ball, or it's just a, uh, it's a special team that that I couldn't be prouder of, and you know, couldn't ask to be a part of a, you know, better group of guys. And Jake, talk about seizing the moment. At what point tonight could you feel, could you tell that this was going to be a special night for you? Uh, well, you know. Right when the game ends, you know, we win, and, and I, I couldn't be happier, but, you know, this, this game doesn't mean nothing until, you know, after this game we're playing here in a couple days. Coach talked so much about how things really changed, especially for you. You won this team over after the Ole Miss loss. How did this team change, and how did you change to help you guys get to this point? Uh, I think we all just came together and, and started playing, you know, better team football. We understood what we had to do to, to get where we are right now, and, and uh, everybody did a great job of doing that. And, and uh, like I said, you know, just unselfishness and, and guys playing for each other. And I love it. The back of the hat that you were just handed actually says one not done because you've still got a lot to do. So oh, yeah. you face the number one team in the nation in Clemson. What's it going to take for you guys to be one and not done and cut and keep this momentum going? You know, we just got to keep the focus that we that we had in preparation for this game. Uh, you know, I know they're a great team and, and uh, you know, I didn't get to see the game today, but I heard they played pretty well. So, you know, uh, we, we respect them and, and everything, but we just got to, you know, be focused and play our game. Certainly a great matchup that we're certainly looking forward to. We will see you in Glendale. Congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you. All man. right, Chris, back to you. you know, Self-proclaimed country boy, very proud of the hunting and fishing trophies that he's collected. Started to pile up some pretty important football trophies as well as Jake Coker. And Alabama with an emphatic statement, a shutout of the Big Ten champions will go to Lindale, Arizona, Kirk, as the favorites to win another championship. But but Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers will like that underdog role. They'll play the disrespect oh. card for the next 10, 11 days. Oh, absolutely. And it, it, the, the thing that's going to be great about the buildup is going to be Deshaun Watson and that offense, the tempo, the spread, the athletic quarterback against this Alabama defense. It's their entire focus has been to prepare for that kind of offense and that kind of quarterback. So we're going to get an answer there in the championship. Partner, enjoyed finishing the year with you. That's Safe fun. travels to Pasadena. Yes, of course, sir. we'll see you in Glendale, Arizona. In just a little while here, you can zip over to New York. Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and Eat with Ryan Seacrest on ABC. And the drop of the ball inside 15 minutes. But in the meantime, we'll present the trophies. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic to Alabama on the Ford GT postgame show. And get to a look ahead to the championship matchup between Alabama and Clemson. Welcome to the Ford GT postgame. And we're closing in on Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. Scotty set up at the 30 yard line here in his little desk, ready to bring you a complete wrap up of both semifinal games. But first, the trophy <laughs> presentation. Field side to John Saunders. Oh, Chris, thanks a lot. Things are a little tight down here, guys, aren't they? First, want to introduce a couple of gentlemen instrumental to this. It's Dan Navikov, chairman of the Cotton Bowl Athletic Association, and Rich Kramer, chairman and CEO and president of Goodyear, for the presentation of the Cotton Bowl Classic Trophy to Nick Saban. Thank you, John. And on behalf of Goodyear, the college football playoff, and the Cotton Bowl Athletic Association, we congratulate both teams on a well-played game and a tremendous season. Now, I present the Cotton Bowl Classic Championship Trophy to our semifinal champion, Coach Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Yeah. Congratulations and good luck in Phoenix. Congratulations, Nick. Another one for the trophy case. You guys were in a semifinal last year against an Ohio State Buckeyes team that went on to win the national championship. Did you guys learn something from that experience? I think we learned a lot. I think last year we sort of participated in the game. You know, this year we would have really wanted to come and make a statement and, you know, do something special. And I'm really proud of the guys for the way they played today, the coaches for the great job that they did, the preparation. Uh, the Cotton Bowl folks have been great all week, so this has been a fantastic trip for us. I don't know if you're aware of this yet, but you had more points than they had yards on the ground, and that is saying something about your defense. Well, I think our defense did a great job today, but I think this was a great team win. Offense made some big plays, scored some points. We did score a touchdown on special teams, so this is a great team win. That's how we wanted it to be, and I'm proud of all of them. 
you knew coming into the game that they'd be keen to stop your Heisman Trophy winner, so you knew you'd have to throw the ball a little bit to be successful, and you guys were pretty successful at doing that. Well, we knew we might struggle a little bit to run it against them, and we knew we had to have some run pass options, and Jake did a fantastic job of throwing the ball and taking advantage of that, and uh, we did a really good job today. So really pleased with the way we played offense. I know you well enough to know that the minute this game was over went to triple zeros that you started thinking about the Clemson Tigers and what you have to face in the championship game. What do you expect in that type of game? Do you expect to, to grind it out early like this one? No, I, we really haven't thought about who we would play in that game yet. We know we're going to play Clemson now, so we'll zero in on them. They have a great team and a great coach and have had a fantastic season. But you know, I'm proud of the way our guys compete in the game, and we'll do everything we can to help them get ready to uh, have a chance to be successful in a national championship game. I have just one one more question, and that is the fact normally you win this game and that's it. You raise the trophy and you're the champion in your previous experiences. This is a little bit different. Does it change your preparation or thought process going into this? Well, I think the, the playoff is really good for the fans. I think it creates a lot of interest and excitement. And, uh, you know, our team is really appreciated the opportunity to be here, and we appreciate the opportunity we have next week against a very good Clemson team. Nick, congratulations. We'll see you in Phoenix. Gentlemen, congratulations right now. Let's go up to Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit. Guys. When the confetti begins to fly, John, thank you. Man not known for glowing adjectives. Finds a few. Clearly gratified and proud, but knowing there's a lot more work to be done because anything short of a championship is not what Saban and the Tide open a season hoping no, for. No, and, I, and I think both Clemson and Alabama, you know, this is a this new territory for teams. You, you celebrate, but you know there's another prize that's much larger that's out there on January 11th, so it's kind of a seven or eight as far as celebrations go. Henry scored early after a bomb to Ridley. Cyrus Jones, the big pick before halftime. Look at the play by Ridley here. The hand strength and the toe tap given a touchdown upon further review. This was huge as Alabama began to pull away. And then Cyrus Jones making the special teams touchdown, his fourth of the season, really seemed to put Michigan State away. For good measure, they went deep to Ridley again, a 50-yard connection from Coker, who was 25 of 30 for 286 tonight. And one final stiff arm from the Heisman Trophy winner, Derrick Henry, who finished with 75 yards and a couple of touchdown runs. Ala. Bama rolls 38 nothing back after this quick break. The Ford post game is brought to you by Ford. We go further so you can and Sherwin Williams make the most of your color with the very best paint. Welcome back to the Ford GT post game. And these two semifinals, Kirk, there were two outstanding defensive performances. Obviously, Alabama's shutout speaks for itself, but as you see Jay Coker talking to the media on the field, his great performance. Meanwhile, in Miami, Clemson shut out an excellent Oklahoma offense after halftime. And again, we told you earlier, expecting to get Shaq Lawson back. So what about that Clemson defense, Brent Venables and his crew against Derrick Henry and Coker in the championship game. Uh, yeah, Brent Venables has come up with a lot of answers this year with a defense that broke in about nine new starters. Uh, you throw in Shaq Lawson, and the injury, hopefully he's going to be okay. You mentioned that uh, there's a report now that he feels uh, that he would be able to play in that game, which is huge. But, uh, boy, Clemson impressive. Ba Baker Mayfield, in my opinion, the way Samaji Pirine, Joe Mixon, that offense is playing at the end of the year. They're playing great. But I think Clemson steps up, makes a big statement. They'll have a ton of momentum. They'll play the underdog role because they'll be underdogs against Alabama. I think the story of that game will really be the other side of the ball. Alabama's built their entire defense over the last couple of years on getting better against spread teams that run tempo that have athletic quarterbacks. And now we get going to get it really get to see it how much they've improved. We saw them lose to Ole Miss. We saw Chad Kelly move the ball against them. And now here comes an even more athletic quarterback in Deshaun Watson in a very similar scheme. So I'm, I think it's that's the matchup to me that I think everybody's going to be hyping and building up to see Watson against that defense. 
Yeah, Watson was so sharp in that victory. You call him Spider-Man because he's so yeah. flexible and elusive yeah. and hard to bring down. And certainly yeah. he'll have his hands full. And that'll be a, another big challenge for Clemson's offensive line against this group tonight that was the, so dominant. Yeah, I mean, that front, uh, kind of the, the, the hearts, heart and soul of this, this team, along with Reggie Ragland and Ryan Kelly and some others, but j just a team that's, that's on a mission. I, I think the loss last year at Ohio State stung. I think the loss to Ole Miss this year was, was another statement where they could go they could have gone to the left or to the right with that fork in the road they obviously selected the right direction it's a football team that right now has not looked back they made the adjustments that they needed to made and I, I think it, what's great about this championship game is the four teams were down to two and you have two teams playing great football with a ton of confidence coming into this final game yes yeah, Saban seeking his fifth national championship and Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tiger is seeking a milestone win for the program. His last national title was about three and a half decades ago. Has always been fighting within their own state with the Gamecocks, trying to get up and over Florida State in the ACC. They did both of those things this year. They are perfect headed to that collision with the Crimson Tide in Glendale, Arizona on January 11th. So the semifinals are finished. The final matchup is set in the final few minutes of 2015. There may still be time to flip over and Catch the ball drop. <laughs> you know, New Year's Rock and Eat with Ryan Seacrest. Absolutely. Right. That's on ABC. Disappointment for Cook and the Spartans as his college career ends. Tonight's game produced by Bill Bunnell, directed by Derek Mobley. We thank our entire talented, dedicated crew who will regroup in Glendale, Arizona for the championship game on January 11th. For all of them, for Kirk, Heather Cox, Tom Rinaldi, Chris Fowler saying so long from Arlington. We'll see you at January 11th, 8.30 Eastern time for the college football playoff championship game presented by AT&T, Clemson, and Alabama. Sports Center coming up right now with Scott Van Pelt.